What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. Look who it is. Hello, I'm Scott. <laughs> Hello, I'm Hello. Scott. That is Scott, the legend, the OG, Scott from Scott Chess Dummies. Um, still with Scott Chess Dummies, but also um, you're uh, kind of moonlighting with uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. <laughs> yeah, well, almost moonlighting with the Scotch Test Dummies anymore. <laughs> That's right. Um, so yeah, Jason and I were talking beforehand. We go back. The first time I've been on in your studio, first time on set with you. Yeah. We've done a lot of collaborations over the years, you know, meeting up on live streams, meeting in Austin, um, doing different things like that. That's right. <laughs> Where Bart <laughs> looks super different. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not Bart. Dustin! Does that help? <laughs> ha hashtag not Bart. <laughs> um uh, so yeah, and in fact is I had to remind Jason when when he started the mash and drum 2018, 2018 you said. Yeah. Bart and I were probably around eight thousand sub six thousand, eight thousand subscribers at the time. Yep. And you were starting, you had con reached out and contacted us and said, Hey, I'm thinking about starting reviewing whiskeys. Can you watch this video? Kind of give me some feedback and let me know what I need to improve. And I remember watching it, and I think I told you, I said, it looks good. I said, your lighting is good. You got a good mic, good camera. Um, the quality was good. And I yeah, was like, go yeah, forth. Did. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, I was like, who can I reach out to here? So I reached out to a few channels. You were one of them. I uh, got You were like one of like the three that gave me feedback, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't, and even then, though, there wasn't near as many channels. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like popped in right before there was a whole bunch of ones that, that all of a sudden spawned, and then... You know, COVID kind of spawned a whole nother generation of great channels as well. So, yeah. so yeah. But yeah, we went from the master and you being the learner to you being the master, and now we're the learner. <laughs> oh, you're the, the learner coin, now. To coin, you know, a Star Wars. <laughs> the master has become the teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but no. So anyway, yeah. But with the Scotch Test Dummies, of course, I had worked with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society quite a bit. We'd done some collaborations with them, Bart yeah. and I. Yeah, and uh, I ended up getting a job with them last year, so I started in November with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. Um, with the holiday season and everything that came up, I'd kind of I'd had this YouTube road trip in mind that I wanted to do and just meet up with people that yeah. I knew in the that that I'd collaborated with. In yes, the past. I mean We've just so things. just yesterday you were with Chad and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Uh, who were you before that? You were with uh, well uh, Monday night. I was in Nashville and you were ben, in Nashville. Uh, ben okay. also at the SMW or SMWS. We, and yeah. we looked at the vaults collection, which may or may not come up again here later tonight. May or may not. Uh, yeah. So then uh, Lexington, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky last night, Columbus, Ohio tonight. Tomorrow night I'm going on up to Michigan, up to Midland, up to Dan and Sean with the Bourbon Junkies. Uh, be on their channel. And end up Friday night in Indianapolis with the Scotch Four Dummies. So it's going to be a good week. But we've got some good whiskeys tonight to to look at. Uh, I'm excited. Thank you, Jason, for letting me come on and do this with you, and and also show introduce uh, SMWS to your following as well. And yeah, and yeah, and even even for the bourbon drinkers out there, um, there's some great. I mean. Bourbon drinkers, just like mostly whiskey drinkers, we like exclusivity and rarity. Yeah. And that's really what you get with SMWS. You get to try a lot of different um, single cask whiskeys that you won't really be able to find on the shelf. Um, so we like that part about it. But we're going to be dive we're going to be trying some bourbon tonight, some some of this. There's some selections in here you said you want to try. You were kind of I saw your eyes looking around. You got some good bottles. In here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Scott was I think he was eyeing my William Leroy Weller. So we might get into that a little bit later, too. But uh, let's uh, say hi to some people here in the chat. Um, multicasking, Univo, Univoke, uh, Big Vix in the house, Sugar Kitty, Darrell Stewart. What's going on, man? Nice to see you. Uh, Burr Ben is in the house, my man from Long Island. What's going on? Ben Hernandez is here. Tim Gorgeous in the house. Justin Jenkins. Uh, Jeffrey Wack, the Wack Attacks in the house. Uh, what's going on, man? Anthony Orlando is here. Oh, Jeffrey's going to – he likes the sherry, so he's going to be a oh, fan good. of tonight. So yeah. we have – we have some we'll, – we'll talk about some of the bottles we're getting into tonight, uh, which would be great. Uh, JG is here. Anthony Orlando. Hey, Karen B. Ford is here. Nice to see you, Karen, as always. Eric McDaniel, Christopher, David. What's going on, bud? Jared W. Slapshot. Uh, Whiskey Knows. What's going on, Marty? Nice to see you, man. Uh, Roy R. Does Things. Jeff Perkins. Uh, who else? Kenneth Rathburn is here. Ethan F. Tim Evans. 
Sean Peak, the Bourbon Vans here. What's going on, Bourbon Van? Great, great channel. If you guys have not checked out the Bourbon Van, you need to. Uh, Mike Franklin, Loch Ness is here. What's going on, Loch Ness? Nice to see you. Israel Torres, Lloyd Smith, AC Jones, William Davilar. What's going on? The Electron Cloud, um, One Nation. Let's see. Steve A, the OG mod, the original wrench. Gotta love Steve uh, A. Yeah. Yeah. Old Man Bourbon, what's going on? Uh, hey, Thin Gian is here. What's going on? Uncle Nate drinks whiskey in the house. Um, he's sipping tequila, actually, says Tin. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I can take that anymore. Uh, whiskey with E. Oh, damn. Cheers, guys, from Australia. How's your sense of smell and taste? Everyone's been kind of asking. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, he got COVID, and he had some pretty long-lasting effects yeah. of the... October of 2020. October of 2020. Yeah. Smell and taste were both gone for several months. Yep. Taste started to come back sooner. Smell was still gone for the longest time. And finally, I think within the last month, my smell is back to full strength. Yep. But I still have smell distortion. There's certain pungent odors that just don't smell anything like what they should. But I think the smell is back as far as getting hints of this and that and everything. Yeah. So I've just noticed different scents, you know, candles or fragrances or things that I hadn't been picking up in the past. Yeah. So, so why don't we give kind of everybody a rundown of tonight's theme? So not only we're going to give you some, for those of you trying to like dip your toe into scotch, I've given some, some recommendations, but with Scott here, I feel like we can kind of really take a deep dive into some great scotches, um, you know, for, you know, bourbon drinkers that are trying to get into scotch. But tonight, why don't you tell them what we're going to be drinking from the SMWS? So the SMWS is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society started in the 80s in Scotland. It's branched out. We're worldwide. Uh, we've got our own American branch now, smwsa.com. Uh, you can go there and check out more information. But we source spectacular whiskeys, um, some of the best single barrels um, that you'll taste. But 99% of what we do are single barrel cask strength. We don't water anything down, no color added. We've done a handful of rums, cognacs, armagnacs, and those things. They've all been single barrel, barrel strength. Yeah. Um, cask strength. And, and the part I love is that you have distilleries that are in the mix that don't really ever release cask strength variants of some of their regular bottles, but you get to taste them um, with, with, the, uh, with the club. Yeah. So, so, but uh, three years ago, three, four years ago, we did start, we did our first blend, blended batch. We released those at 50%. We have our 14th batch that's coming out tomorrow. And Jason and I get to be the first ones to share it and try it out. But it's called Duro, Duro Cruise. It's a port finished blend, 50%. Now, so these we do release at 50% ABV, um, 10 years old. We've had sherry blends and peated blends before. This is the first port blend that we've released. So we're going to look at this one first. We've got uh, a couple sherry uh, finished, sherry matured whiskeys from the SMWS we're going to look at. A couple of old and dignified profiles. And then we'll yes. see what happens after that. Old and dignified. And then we don't know what's going to happen. I actually have some SMWS files that Scott has never had. Uh -huh. So we might dive into a couple of those. Probably get into some uh, some of the rare stuff that I have that Scott wants to dive in. So we'll see. It's gonna be a nice it's gonna be a nice <laughs> night of whiskey, guys. As you can see, we, there's a lot of glasses. So we do have a special. I'll tell you later um, after we get done with the tasting. We got a special running this week for uh, anybody that joins the SMWS. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So All right, let's wanna, get into the whiskey. You, you want to pour, man? Let's do this. You bet. Right. Yeah, I'm in. I am in. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have Cohen's in the house. What's up, Cohen? Got the new Glen Alecky, ten cast strength. I missed for 75 bucks and a Four Roses pick. Looks, looks a lot darker than nine years. Oh, man, I'm so excited for my Four Roses pick. Uh, classic car travelers in the house. What's going on? Nice to see you. Scott Pigley's here. Um, Brett Marquette, what is going on? Uh, Moose76, two brothers from different mothers. That's right. Uh, oh, thank you, Andre DeSouza, becoming a YouTube member. Thanks for joining the drumline. Scott, cheers, guys. Been sipping a little Russell Reserve, but I think it's time to switch over to some SMWS. Join in the fun, Sunday evening scotch. Yep. Um, let's see here. Who else we got? Whiskey Mountains is here. Uh, Whiskey Mountains, if you're up to do a giveaway tonight, I'd love to uh, give, give a couple things away here. Um, so I'm going to do three giveaways tonight. I'm going to give away... Um, so for every super chat you guys do, I'll give away a 
I'll give away some samples of uh, a good amount of these SMWS bottles. Maybe I'll do uh, maybe a four or five pack of samples. I'll do three, three five pack samples, and then one lucky winner will also get a bottle of the latest Bardstown Bourbon Company Fusion Number no. Six that I just got. Uh, we'll get that one, and maybe I'll throw in a sample of the triple stave, uh, the triple stave finish from Bardstown Bourbon Company as well. I was at an event with them on Monday. So we just got some really cool stuff to give away tonight. So I'll give away three prize packs. Anybody that wants to get in on it, any super chat, and uh, we'll give those away later. So, all right. We got uh, one of the original mash and drum coins. Oh, that's an OG coin. Yeah, that's the, uh, the yeah. drum set one. That's the drum set one, yep. I saw Everwind is in the house tonight. What's up, Everwind? Nice to see you. Top Shelf Dustin's in here. Here we go. Uh, cool to see you two guys together. What's up, G-Man? Uh, G-Man's been around. He's followed the dummies for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've always noticed him in the chat. Yep. Chris Beaton is here. Uh, let's see here. Copper Bones. There's Everwind. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, man. Last time I saw Everwind was at the uh, Scotch for Dummies event. Uh -huh. Yep, he was up there yep. in Indianapolis for that, their sixth anniversary. Yeah. Sad to say it's been over 20 years since I've had any Scotch. Well... It's a great time to start. No time like the present. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me catch up here. Whiskey Nose with a $5 super chat. Here's a new mouse pad fun for Jason. <laughs> I don't need a mouse pad. <laughs> Lots of glasses. Stay vertical. We're going to try. Um, let's see here. Andrew Buchanan says, my whack attack pick just arrived in time for the stream. You know what I'm sipping on. Let me know what you think about it, Andrew. It's, we're very proud of that pick. Um, so this is considered work for Scott now. If so, we're congrats. We are all jealous. Yep. That's right. <laughs> um, Master Drum, if, uh, let's see, new member. Landlord, Jason, have you had any of the Oak and Eden finished whiskeys with Oak and Spire? I have. Some good, some okay. Not a huge fan. I still think the actual whiskey itself needs a little time. Dusty Dan in the house. What's going on, Dusty? Look who's here. Lee is here. Scotch in the Bayou. Always nice. great to see you, Lee. Old Jabroni. <laughs> What's up, Daniel? Daniel. Yeah. JG's <laughs> in the house. What's going on? Um, Sugar Kitty. Crunchitize me, Captain. <laughs> I talk about cereal a lot, so you know, she gets me for that. Sugar Kitty. Uh, Crunchitize. Well, you, just, you just asked me earlier. Uh, we were drinking uh, a whiskey upstairs, and you asked me if I'd ever had um, raisin brand crunch oh raisin nut brand Ran, raisin nut brand yeah, yeah we were just we were drinking what were we drink we we're drinking boona Haven 25 upstairs and i'm like it just smells, it smells like raisin nut brand cereal That's hey look who it is chad and sarah yep nice to see you guys so uh, anybody that didn't watch last night on it's bourbon night channel i presented them with we went through five different flavor profiles from the smws we have 12 so i kind of wanted to see which flavor profile would align with a bourbon drinker and surprisingly to me, I thought I was hoping that one would line with those two uh, and three or four of them were spot on or they got into they it. They got into it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's good yeah. to see uh, people that don't go too crazy about get into it. You know, you've got some scotch background. You've been drinking scotch. Yeah, I love scotch. So, so I wasn't so. necessarily worried about presenting flavor profiles yeah. generally to you. Uh, and I knew Sherry finished whiskeys. Yeah, were the, high on and your, you. Sherry, Sherry mixed with bourbon, which you brought, mm -hmm. which I'm really excited for. Hey, Jenna's in the house. Hi, Jenna. Whiskey, a go girl. You guys need to follow her on Instagram. Great uh, scotch content, whiskey content. Yep. Uh, thanks for dropping in. And she's with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. And she's also with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, this is so this is just will be available tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time on yep. our website. So, so. But can you ask Scott what he recommends? I tried the Balvenie 12 that you recommended me, but did not like it. But I got it going at 14, and I love that. What else can I try that I might like? Well, hold that. We'll get into that a little bit later, Big Vic. Uh, we're going to dive into this first. Glenn Levitt 14 or Glenn Fittick 14? Uh, oh, yeah. Was it the Glenn Levitt or Glenn Fittick? Probably Glenn Fittick 14. Yeah. That's a good one because that's ex-bourbon. Yeah. yeah, it's all ex-bourbon, so yeah. that's a good one. All right. Oh, thanks, Whiskey Mountains. I appreciate it. All right. All right, so tell so, me a little bit about this one. So this is Port? Doro Cruz. Uh, it's a combination of ex-bourbon casks and ex-port. Oh, Finished nice. Whiskies. Okay. 10 years old, 50% ABV as the first port finish blend that we've done. So I got, I got a blast of fruit and raspberries right off it. 
I got, I got strawberry pop tart. Strawberry. Strawberry pop tart. Yeah. Because there's like a mix of vanilla icing and the and the strawberry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a little bit like pastry too. Now I did pour light. Feel free if you want more to pour it. But I thought. Oh no, I'm good. good. We got a lot of whiskey right, through, right, so right. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bart would yell at me if I poured in that much. There's a Glen Levitt 14 that's ex cognac, I believe. Okay. We'll, oh, we'll let, okay. We'll let. Uh, I have not had that one. Yeah. Uh, Copper. Well, very interesting the difference between Scotch and bourbon. Yeah. Huge differences, uh, but I think there's some great crossover there for both sides. I swear my co-neighbor needs to stop talking on this call so I can focus on the show. So we're <laughs> <laughs> Drink on man hump day. It is. Cheers, man. Cheers. All right, let's try this. Yep. Great nose. Very fruity. Mm. Mm. The whole front of the palate is just all fruit. Mm -hmm. It's just an orchard. Mm. Just strawberry. Ooh, nice little caramel. I'm getting, I'm getting lemon. You're getting lemon? Lemon and even juicy fruit gum. Um, zest, lemon zest on the back end. Just very citrusy. Very. I was fruity. not expecting that much lemon on the palate mm -hmm. to mix with that, like strawberry lemonade. <clears throat> mm. Generally, ports, like to me, raspberries and strawberries, kind of similar to those, um, yeah. not the dark um, sherry notes, but a lighter, citrusy, fruity, tropical type note. <sighs> Vanillas and creams, caramels. I'm getting the darker notes the second sip. The first sip was very bright. Very bright, light fruit. Now the second sip, a little bit more of the oak is coming through. The caramels. I'm getting like this, yeah, I'm getting like this like pastry lemon meringue pie thing going on. But it's like if someone like put some strawberry syrup on it. It's I good. was thinking. I was thinking of an eclair with raspberry, a raspberry jelly type oh, filling, like raspberry donut. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> with I and, can and see then that. the cream frosting or just the cream glaze on just, it. Yeah, just the cream glaze. Damn, the frosting glaze. Oh, we, we should pair this with donuts later. <laughs> this is a sweet. This is a dessert. <laughs> this is this is a desserty type of uh, desserty <laughs> type of sipper, guys. Can practically hear Bart blowing your headphones out, yelling at you. <laughs> Easier to go from Irish to Scotch than bourbon to Scotch. I would I would say so. It's probably a little bit more similarity with the Irish using the malted and unmalted barley. Uh, Scotch mm -hmm. using malted barley. Uh, so you have that flavor profile in mind. But I think you get different. You get more tropical flavors as Irish whiskey gets older. Yeah. More like rich oh, yeah. pineapples and mm -hmm. mangoes. And, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like with Scotch, you get a little bit more of the oak. You get some more deeper, richer. Well, Obviously, it also depends on the cask it's being matured in. plays a big factor. Mm -hmm. But I think overall, yeah, Irish to, to scotch is probably a little bit easier transition than vice versa because bourbon just comes off so much sweeter. You know, generally, maybe, but it's it's so hard to tell just because so, there's so many different palates for people out there. Well, that's true. Um, yeah. Some some bourbon drinkers don't like scotch at all. Some scotch drinkers don't like bourbons at all. Some people taste a peated whiskey for the first time and love it. Yeah. Some hate it. Yeah, um, it's true. You know, sherried whiskey, some people love it. Some people hate it. So, I mean, there's just so many palettes. It's hard to tell. Um, first scotch I fell in love with was Quinta Rubin. That's that's Quinta a Rubin. that's yeah. a scotch, the 14-year Glen Warrenji. That's that's one that's uh, that I highly recommend that's for beginners as well. The Quinta Rubin. I have a bottle of it over there, but. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Bart start. and I had done that one early on, and then several yeah. years later went back to it and was like just so yeah. impressed with it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've got Perry in here from This Is My Burning Podcast. Perry. How you doing, Perry? Drop in to say hi before I record an interview. Hope everyone's having a great evening. Nice to see you, Perry. As always, you miss you, buddy. Hope to see you soon. Terrence Scott, Weston Pick from Mash and uh, Journey. So much fruit mixed with peanut notes. Delicious. Yeah, I love that one. It is just chocolate-covered fruit all day long. The uh, our Westland pick is getting rave reviews, so I got a thumbs up, and you all should too. There you go. Thank you so much, Chad and Sarah. Um, the master gentleman really enjoying the whack attack. It's my first light whiskey. Yeah, and it just kind of opens up. Give it a little time to Andrew as it opens up, so you get some more darker flavors out of it too. Everyone has a good question. Anyone know the price of the twenty six Isla that Scott shared with Chad and Sarah last night? Sounded pretty amazing. Uh, it was it sold out. Unfortunately, it was six hundred and ninety five dollars. Yeah, how much was it? Six ninety five. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it sold out quick. 
And it sold out that well, uh, yeah. that age of a Lafroy I got considered. Well, uh, the, distillery oh, 29. the Distillery 29. I'm sorry. Yes. Distillery, distillery 29. 29 is popular. Distillery 29 is well known and popular. <laughs> uh, cheers, Jason Scott. Scott Love is Scotch SML US tour. Yeah, this is pretty cool that you're getting to go around uh -huh. and visit a bunch of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is something I had in mind from December wanting yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. and just with the holidays, with the season, with COVID, with everything kind of getting pushed back, yeah, it finally you, happened. Yeah, you reached out a while back about it. But, and what I hope to happen, though, is that hopefully this hopefully this week is a success overall, which I'm sure it will be. But hopefully we can look back and say, okay, what worked, what didn't, and let's do this again in the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the same format. Maybe we have to tweak it and do some different things. But hopefully, yeah, I'm, I'd like to grow it. I'd like to spend more time here. Yeah. And maybe even organize an SMWS tasting, you know, at a venue here. Yeah, for sure. You know, in addition to. Yeah, stuff I, think, I think there's a lot of room for that, especially as things are starting to starting to see more stuff open up now. It's a it's a great it's a great timing. Well, we just SMWS just sent out an email earlier today. Our stuff is starting is going to start. Yeah, you, get, you start, guys are starting to taste things again. Yeah, so that's ex, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, some people are open minded. Some people are not. Well, that's true too. Which one are you, Daniel? Yeah. I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Rhymes with spot. <laughs> uh, everyone, now that Scott is on tour, does he have whiskey groupies at the Master Room? Uh -oh. um, no, but our waiter did recognize Jason tonight. Yeah, I had a group I had a groupie at the uh, the restaurant tonight. That yeah. was kind of fun. Yeah. He's like, You look familiar and he gave us a couple drinks on the house. It was kind of nice. And he, the thing is, he didn't even know you lived here. Yeah, he didn't know I, li I lived in uh, Columbus. He just recognized me. Yeah, he walked up and started talking to us. He goes, wait a minute. I know yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, you recognize you pretty quick. <laughs> uh, I joined the SMW USA last year, probably due to Scott. It had been on my radar for a while. Finally pulled the trigger. I had four bottles ship out today. Excited for him. That's awesome, Taylor. Yeah, very nice. Excellent. Yeah. And you are in the, uh, the giveaway tonight, Taylor. So uh, thanks for... Um, Thanks for uh, for the super chat. We'd love to find out more about tasting events. I have a place that may be interested. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth Rathburn, did Power John's Lane have to open up for you? Haven't been a big, haven't been big on my bottle thus far. Um, a, yeah, a little bit. It's yeah. a it's a higher proof. Um, it's kind of the the magic point on that bottle is really like just before it gets halfway down. So give it some time. That's a good one. That's a 12 year. That's, yeah, it's a 12 year. But the thing is, like, you've seen the. Is it the, a higher proof, though? I didn't think Yeah, it's a higher proof. proof. The it? new bottle, though, the 12 is like this big. You wouldn't know oh. it's a 12 year unless you yeah. really look. It's Bourbon Night with a $20 super chat. I had no idea that one scotch cost what it did. Scott told us afterwards. No wonder that one didn't get poured into the dump cup. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I drank the rest of Sarah's. Yeah. Mark Evan Ecker, what does uh, Monkey Shoulder fit? <laughs> Only scotch I've had. So monkey shoulder was always like the quintessential, this is the beginner scotch to go to. But I feel like there's so much more better to start with than that. Well, yeah, yes and no. Um, there, there's nothing wrong with monkey shoulder. It does get recommended a lot. It's a blend. It's in the $30 range. There's nothing offensive to it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some other choices out there as well. Yeah. But a lot of people do get recommended. A lot of people do try monkey shoulder. <laughs> this is a great person. idea, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That should be your, if anyone from the SNWS is watching, Scott needs an SNWS like ice cream truck that we could all but, just chase when he comes through town. It would have like bagpipes playing. Bagpipes. You hear it? Yeah. People just take off running. They just run. <laughs> it's, it's Scott. It'd be amazing. All right. Doro Cruz is good. You're, let's move on to this. I, I like this one, but I can't get jelly donuts out of my head now. So, yeah. 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 If you guys Sorry. like to eat jelly donuts, you can now drink it with that one. What's the price going to be on that one? Yeah, I knew you was going to ask me. Um, Jenna, I should have looked it up before we went live. If Jenna is still in there, do you know what the price on the Duro Cruise is? Yeah. I want to say it's it's a, it's around $100. Okay. Um, and I have... It's got my, a nice spice to it, too, for uh, something that sweet. It is in my laptop, which is way over there. All right. So no worries. We'll figure there. it out. Um... Top Shelf Dustin says, Scott, just pour 26-year-old distillery 29 at cask strength. Oh, Lordy. That's right. He just, yep, pretty much. <laughs> uh, yep, $100 says yep. Uh, Jenna. Okay, yep. thanks, Jenna. Yeah, it's good. That's a, that's a nice pour. Now we're getting, now I'm getting, all right, here we go. 14-year uh, distillery 55, ex-bourbon hogshead, and then ex-olorosa. Now, I love the mix of 
Oloroso and bourbon together. Yeah. I feel like you get the best of both worlds. You get the fruit notes from the Oloroso and you get the caramel and vanillas from uh, bourbon. And I just love that mix together. This uh, this one is available still from uh, February's uh, the first of the month outturn. Uh, there wasn't that many bottles left on the website. I did look earlier. It's 55.67. Uh, like Jason said, 14 year old space side first cast. It's a double maturation first cast X bourbon hogshead. And then second cask is the first fill X Oloroso hogshead 57.8%. Ooh. So that type of cast strength, you know, uh, that type of proof point, you don't necessarily find in a scotch a lot of, uh, you know, obviously ones that are available. Aside from like the Abelor, Abunad, mm -hmm. and a couple of other cast strength offerings that you would find. Uh, Landlord, no, I did not. I haven't seen the Waterfords. Uh, I have to I have to kind of look for those. Um, they're not available here in Ohio. Uh, does Scott have clones? He's been to like three states in three days. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> that's what that's what Funny. I said, Shayla. By the way, Shayla from Whiskey Central, you guys have not. She does bourbon scotch, great history buff too. She's a nerd like I am. Uh, subscribe and mm -hmm. watch uh, Shayla. Um, let's see here. Shayla would uh, if Shayla Shayla lives in Mexico. If you move to the state, Shayla, let me know because you'll be you'll you'd be high on my list. Scott, I need some SMW events in the Ooh. deep south. New Orleans is loving lovely in the spring. We have tickets for the one scheduled in April. Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, then, well, you know, <laughs> and you have Cajun food. Yeah, or is it Creole food? Wasn't uh, there's a difference? Yeah, I think there's it's Cajun and it's Cajun. Creole. But I think it depends on where in Louisiana in Louisiana you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, Lee will educate us. Lee here. will definitely educate us shortly. Uh, yeah, shortly. She's just going to break it down. So, um, yeah, we start. So we started with a port, and I just realized we didn't add a drop of water to see what happened. But that's okay. It was fifty percent. It was fifty percent. We could add a drop to this. We're going to start with this one, which is that double cask, and the first being the ex bourbon. Yeah. The next one we're going to was ex bourbon was is exclusively um, sherry mm -hmm. matured. Oh, so, we'll do, John. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Whiskey Raj. Okay. Who? Oh, this has oh, all yeah. this has all the things. <laughs> this one, yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I said, this was from our first. So the SMWS will do generally we do two out turns a month. We do one at the first of the month, which is 10 to 15 bottles, somewhere in that range. And then we'll do a mid-month out turn. Uh, that's a little little bit smaller, four to eight bottles usually. So our mid-month February is coming out next week. Uh, we've got four bottles coming out. But this was from the first outturn of, of February. Um, uh, where was it? Uh, let me see here. Yes, JG. It is uh, natural presentation, non-chill filtered. I'm here for the scotch. Really? <laughs> Are you, Scott? Okay. He, no, you meant to say Scott. <laughs> Scott is here for the Scott scotch. is here for the Scott. Oh, I have this bottle, and I'm curious your take on this. The Chattanooga did a Scotch cask finish, and Chattanooga is a high malt bourbon, really? like Tennessee, and I think they did an amazing job with that. I'm I'm curious to get your take on that a little bit later. Yeah, so we'll dive into that. Yeah. Um, let's see here. This Ooh. says all the things better be on an SMW bottle name sometime to match and drum. If I ever get to pick my own single cask, that's what I'm naming it. All the things. <laughs> Drinking Glen Morangy Tale of Cake. Any cast strengths along this line you might recommend? Tale of Cake. So that's a Madeira finish. Daniel's coming in there with some. Match and drum. Did you both shave your arms for this live or just you, Jason? <laughs> There's hair on there. He's got, I got some white hair. He's got hair. I got hair. Daniel just Daniel just wants a, a high intensity camera so we can see all the things. We can, <laughs> hey, we can put you. We can put you in timeout, Daniel. I've done that before. <laughs> Man, the it's so there. I mean, the sherry notes are there, but there's definitely something else in there with it that's just like a. I'm getting vanilla almond. Uh, uh, I was going uh, nutty. I was, there's there's a, nutty, a nuttiness to it, and it's sweeter. It's lighter. Honeyed, malty. Yeah, I could definitely see the honey. Oh, the nose on that is incredible. Mm. You know, I'm also getting on this Tootsie Roll. There's a little bit of a chocolate Tootsie Roll note okay. that I'm picking up. Okay. I'm going to go in before you because you're going to sip it. Mm -hmm. uh, new to scotch and started with Aaron 10. All I get on the palate is pine. Is that normal? I was expecting some fruit. Mm. Let him swallow and he'll tell you. 
This chat does look like a wrench reunion. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's a, mm, I'll let you. Okay, I'm going to go in. in with you, why do you answer the Aaron question? Yeah. Um, Aaron, 10, you should get uh, pine. No, that's not necessarily normal. Maybe sometimes there's some hints of some pine. Uh, Aaron 10 is an ex bourbon cask, I believe, exclusively. There should be, it should be vanillas and citruses, a little bit of caramels and slight oaks that you're getting there. Oh, this goes on forever. Yeah. That's for it. And, and I, I believe this was 12 years in the ex bourbon hogshead and two in the Oloroso. This share. reminds me of the Buna Haben 25 we had oh. with a finish. Oh, <laughs> right. You're not too far off. Right. Yeah. Um, is there a MS, uh, SMWS bar in DC? Do they get the outturns too? Perhaps I can afford a dram or three versus buying a whole bottle. So you want to look up, um, I just had on the tip of my tongue. Yes, there is. Um, Jack Rose saloon. Oh, Jack Rose gets the SMWS bottles. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We used to call them partner bars, but we can't call them that anymore. Now they're destination bars. Destination I think we bars. Call them. So I agree with Kenneth. I think this is where the pine kind of could come across. Um, if it's pretty, it's a if it's a light scotch, earthy, grassy, malty. I'm not sure pine, but I could see how that could maybe come across a little bit. Yeah, I think in some things you could get a slight pine. Yeah. Um, but if that's the predominant note that you're getting this has like right. almost like a rye spice going on on the back end maybe just because I'm, we're talking about pine but <laughs> yeah uh, it doesn't taste like rye but it's very peppery on the finish it is going on for days here yeah peppery um but also your your cinnamon your nutmeg almonds slight sherry <laughs> notes not necessarily um plum or raisin or anything like that but you can tell those darker fruits the darker there. fruits are there i'm getting when i first Sweet. nosed it i thought blueberry immediately mm. yeah yeah there was there's a lot of of fruit where's adhd Ooh. whiskey blueberries blueberries Whew. hey the average okay. drinker is here how are you guys doing uh is there an ms smws bar in colorado or near, do you know, Colorado? Yeah, I do not know of one in Colorado. No. We used to have a list at smws.a.com. SMW, I can't even talk. SMWSA.com, which is the American website. So if you go there, oh, yeah, if you just yeah. go to smws.com, you'll end up at the UK website. So there is the code and the name of it and the age. Called Hardy and Substantial Cask fifty five point six seven. So real quick, I, I'll, let me go ahead and throw it in here. We, we're running a special this week. The SMWS is a we are a membership based um, society. We're a society. We're a club. Ninety nine dollars for your first year is what it costs to join. We are running a special this week. Um, sign up and you'll get a fifty dollar gift card uh, to use on your first purchase. So basically half off for the membership. Yeah, I have a I have a link down in the uh, in the in the in the description of the video if you guys want to check it out. Um, what's the uh, what's the code again? You have a there, code? Nope, no code. Just, oh, no, just sign up this week. Yeah. Sign up this week, you get with, some money off. Yeah. With Valentine's Day coming up and with the YouTube tour and everything, they nice. wanted to offer that. So, uh, if you need to get, if you need to get something for your spouse, your significant other, and you don't have anything <laughs> in hand, you can say, "Here's your email. I signed you up, and you're a member of the SMWS now." Yeah, the mash and drunk autocorrect fail. <laughs> That's happened before, Aaron Drinker. Do not, do not worry about that, dude. I'm loving this. Yes. Oh my god! Yeah, this is a good one for a good. for a double maturation, only having a sherry mm -hmm. um, finish. So a sherry, uh, a, a fin. When you see a, like a finish on a bottle, it's usually a shorter time in that bottle. If you see like something that says sherry finish. It's usually up to two, two and a half years. So for so for Scotch newbies, like for obviously my audience is you know more probably bourbon forward than Scotch. Um, generally, you know Scotch, um, they're they're aging in used barrels, correct? Mm -hmm. Usually using either ex bourbon, ex sherry. But if you do see something that says first fill, explain the difference between first fill, second fill, and what what well, that can mean on a bottle. 
Or what yeah. that could mean for what's in the glass, what's in the what's in the bottle. So this says just says ex bourbon hogshead. So this had this was in a in a hogshead that had bourbon in it before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you will see first fill ex bourbon mm -hmm. hogshead. Yep. So most most of the casks in the Scotch industry were bourbon barrels prior. Yep. Bur bourbon can only use a barrel one time. One time. It has to be virgin oak. Then mm -hmm. they if they want to make bourbon, they can't use that barrel again. They could use it to make, you know, whiskey, but they couldn't make something and label it bourbon. So they sell those barrels to Scotland, to the Scotch distilleries. Yep. And that Scotch generally doesn't like that virgin oak impact. It Because bourbon has that really strong flavor profile. That comes from that virgin oak using that wood the first time. Mm -hmm. So... Scotch mm -hmm. will buy those bourbon barrels and that bourbon has already soaked a lot of that impact out of the wood. So if you see a first fill, that's the first time scotch has been put in that barrel. We have a lot of whiskeys come out and you'll see, you may see second fill ex bourbon barrel. So that was a bourbon barrel. It got shipped to Scotland. It aged scotch. They dumped it. And now they're aging well, the aging second, batch. second time. Yeah. And you may see even a, th a, a third or a fourth fill. Oh, wow. Which you're getting less and less wood impact, but then you can age that whiskey for so much longer because it's not going to become over oaked. Well, have it hasn't, but in that, like I could see the oak not impacting the whiskey, but wouldn't it, would you get, wouldn't you get less flavor from a third or fourth fill? It, yes, you'll get different notes. Different notes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, but you go. also get a closer look at the distillate you know, that distillery character because it's, you're not getting so you're not much getting wood. So much wood you can influence. actually kind of tell what that distillery tastes like. No, that makes what sense. It, what it produces. Here you go, Shayla. I'd love to collapse, Scott. I'll be in the U.S. for a few months coming up at the Mass right. and Drum. All right. There you go. We'll hold you to There that. I go. Any issue shipping to Ohio? Yeah, uh, SMWS does ship to Ohio, so you're good. Uh, Bourbon, Mass and Drum, I'll be taking over tracking. All right, thanks, man. Thrasher. Scott is making the rounds. Who's he visiting next? Yeah, he's going up to see the junkies mm -hmm. and then going over to see uh, Scotch Four Dummies in Indiana. Yep. So those are his next two stops. Yep, and that's mm -hmm. it for this week. Yeah, and that's this it is, for this week. This is actually the halfway point. I'm down to try something new. Count me on. Still looking for my first Scotch. All right, Ben, you're in, man. <laughs> uh, hey, the Deathless Dogs is here. Another great uh, newer channel. Guys, go check them out. Um. The rum industry buys more ex-bourbon casks than malt whiskey industry. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. Fifth fill, hmm. a.k.a. the Glenn Farkless special. <laughs> water. Did you add water to yours? No, no. Let me do that. How many drops did you add? Just uh, two or three. Okay. Uh, the, these higher, a higher proof whiskey, especially when you get near 60, it takes a few drops. Now, Chad and Sarah saw last night, they generally with bourbon, they don't add water because they haven't ever really noticed a difference. Yeah. But there was at least two, if not three, of our whiskeys last night. When they added water, they noticed a distinct difference in the flavor profile of them. So, and I believe nine out, of, I would say nine out of 10 scotches, if not more, water does help. And this Wait, one, it definitely lightened up and made it sweeter. Oh, yeah. Now I'm getting yeah. just powdered sugar on the nose. Look who's in the chat, Mark Broda. Mark. What's up, Mark? Yep. Be down there in Indy on uh, Friday night, setting them up with a blind challenge with some whiskey. Yeah. If you guys want to learn a lot about scotch from just four regular dudes, just talking about scotch, check out the scotch for dummies. Um, let's see here. Uh, tired cask syndrome. Yeah. Like seriously, like I don't, I don't know if I would, as a whiskey producer, I mean, if that's the only casks I could get, I don't know if I'd want to use a fourth or fifth fill shit. Well, and I think sometimes what you what you can see is someone may age a whiskey for 15, 16, 18, 20 years in a what you in call a, a tired cask. Tired cask. And it really hasn't taken on or changed too much. So they'll move it to something fresher. You know, maybe it maybe they put it in a La Rosa cask or they'll put it in uh move it to a first fill, you know, for a few months, couple of years and, and try to boost that up and get it going. Yeah. I feel like you have more you have more a little bit more play in scotch to do some different things with casks aside from unlike bourbon, which you can really, I mean, you could age it for that first barrel in bourbon, but, and as we see in the bourbon industry and American whiskey, the amount of finishes that are coming out these days is, is endless. Um, but scotch, you can kind of play around with different first, second, third, fourth fills, move it to scotch, move it to other different types of cask maturation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fascinating when you kind of talk about it and, and you kind of look at the different ways you can use those casks. 
that and different regions produce. Yeah, and then the regions with the different, different flavor, different profiles, barleys, the different terroir barleys, comes into play. Different peat, you know, mm -hmm. you have Isla peat, or you could have Highland peat, or Orkney peat. So there's a lot, and there's different characteristics. Yeah, that Orkney peat has like that heather, that that uh, heather honey yeah, type flavor profile, a little lighter and sweeter. Man, this got real sweet with a couple drops of water. Yeah, <laughs> like real, not as sweet as the jelly donut we had, right? But pretty sweet. Yeah. It did. It kind of opened it up. I think water opened it up. I like that. I, I think I like it with the water. Yeah, definitely. Um, Troy man coming in. Cheers. Everyone. I'm on a wine night tonight, but excited to learn more about scotch. He's drinking some vino. You can almost always tell a bourbon is a bourbon. I often tell people that they're trying to be open-minded about all whiskey to try a virgin oak scotch. Virgin oak scotches are, are, uh, interesting. That's an interesting way to try a scotch, but, um, I think De Deanston makes a really nice virgin oak. Uh -huh. Task, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Uh, Ben Romick uses first fill casts only, yes. Sunny evening scotch, uh, tired casts are real, but I will say I've had some refill casts from SMWS that have been hitters. Also, refill is likely at least third fill, right? They usually specify first or second, <gasps> yeah, yeah. 21090 is in the house. What's going on? If you guys love 80s freaking hair bands. You need to subscribe to 21090 immediately. Um, what else we got? Orlando. He says, oh, snap. Two of my favorite whiskey channels and one awesomeness. Cheers from Alaska. Hey, how you doing, man? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sir Spark a lots in the house. Welcome to the Buckeye State, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Jason Busey, the Buse is loot. We were just talking about you. Uh, I told yes. that you're going to be helping out with our Iron Root pick for the Master Journey Whiskey Club. He said you ride around on a Kawasaki down there in Texas. I didn't say Kawasaki, man. Oh, that no, it was an Indian. He oh, has right. a big I ass know. Indian that's motorcycle. He's a like, what? What? <laughs> what? It's not a Kawasaki. I'm going to ride a, I'm gonna ride a cross rocket. <laughs> hey, the whiskey scout's in the house. How you doing? Scout. Man? What's going on? What's going on, Scout? I haven't seen him in a while. Um Gerald Bor uh, Gerald Borak. I'm not close to any of the event locations for SMA, any virtual events. Uh, well, this is kind of a virtual event. <laughs> We've got a uh, liquor store owner up in our area whose name is Dave Dvorak. Any relation? Mm -hmm. You don't you see go. Dvorak too much, that name. Black Bourbon families in the house. I have to embarrass myself because every time they come on, Jason and Brandy, I got to sing their theme song. Oh. Raise your drinks up casually. I'm not going to sing the rest of it for you, though. Oh. Then I'll just get weird. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sipping a little Redwood Empire tonight. Uh, last night was a tour of Alberfeldy 12, 16, 21, nice. which I really enjoyed. Nice. Mm. Very, very good stuff. Um, Lito Cortez just joined. No whiskey for me tonight. I'm on pain meds. Yeah, be yeah. careful with that, man. Uh, the Mastin Drum is the Natty. The Natty going to win on Sunday. Um, I don't know. Who do you got Sunday? Man, it's, 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 it should be a good game. It, it can go either way. Um, yeah. Odds wise, I think I'd have to put money on the Rams, but it could go either way. I yeah, thought see, I see, thought the same with Cincy and, and Kansas City. I thought they yeah, see, see, for my money, I would I, I'm putting money on Cincy because think, I think they're the hot team. No, I think well, the Rams are playing really well, and I think on paper they have the better team. But there's something about Cincy right now. I know. Yeah, that is. True. I don't know. Yeah, I drove by the stadium today, took a picture. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. As soon as you when you're going over that bridge uh -huh. into Cincy, the stadium's yeah. right there. Yeah. So okay, so this one. All right, so yeah, what do we got here? This one, if you were watching, uh, Chad and Sarah got to taste this one last night. Oh. This was the only exclusive maturation I had, where it's been 14 years in Oloroso and PX. So yes. this one is not available anymore, unfortunately. We don't have our. This is in the deep, rich, and dried fruit profile. They generally will sell out pretty quick, and um, the one we just tasted, Hardy and Substantial, is the only one on the website right now. Except for a, I think there's a 30 year old in there that's like seven hundred dollars. Oh, but, damn. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> 50, 56.4 percent on this one. Cast number forty one point one four four. The last one, I don't know if I ever said it. The Hardy and Substantial uh, cast number is fifty five point six seven. For those watching, I apologize right. for not saying that one. Can you really trust Matt? That's my thing, 21090. I don't know if I could really trust Matt Stafford. He I feel like he, he makes never, I feel like he makes more mistakes and I don't know. But 
it's I don't know. It's going to be hard to see. What... He's also made it. He's also won his first three playoff games ever, including the NFC. I mean, championship. Mm -hmm. That's true. I, I, listen, I, I'm just hoping it's a good game. That's all I want. Just give me a good game. Big yeah. Vic, oh, I'll yeah. take some samples to try. There you go. You're in, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Viking bourbon here. Let's see what's going. What else is going on? Um, I can only imagine how that would smell. Yeah, I mean, this is so. This is first ex Oloroso American Oak Butt, which is the initial cask. Second and the final cask is first fill ex Pedro Jimenez Spanish Oak. So Pedro Jimenez is a, a kind of a sweeter type of sherry. You, can you can you describe like the difference between Oloroso and PX? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, flavor wise, flavor wise, the notes that I get, yeah, yes. flavor wise. Oloroso to me is a little bit drier. It's going to produce a lot of. Usually, you're going to get like prunes, raisins, dates, you know, along those really dark um, stone fruits. PX will give you some lighter notes, but you're also going to get a lot of um, syrupy. Kind of raspberry sometimes. Um, depending on the PX, I've gotten some dark toffee and coffee, dark chocolate notes. That's why I like the PX. Yeah, you get those little bit of hint of toffee, coffee notes. Oh, oh my yeah. god! Oh, yeah, it's that's my wheel. That's oh man, I love yeah. it. Uh, Steve A is asking what bottle. Though. This is called a Deep Soul Cast Forty One Point One Four Four X Oloroso, and then first fill PX. So, so, so those watching that don't know, and if you didn't watch Chad and Sarah last night, this is bottle 41.144. The 41 means this is the 41st distillery that uh, the SMWS has bought whiskey from. No. And the 144 means this is the 144th cask that we bought from that distillery. Now, we don't release the distillery names or what's associated with that code. You can go online. Um, there's several sources that have our distillery codes listed that you can you can find out. So... Oh god, I love the nose on this. Yeah, definitely darker. So much. It's darker Compa than... compared to the one we did before that was X Bourbon and mm -hmm. then Oloroso. Be an exclusive Oloroso and PX here. This is my favorite so far. <laughs> At least on the nose. Oh my god. Yeah. Get like a like a graham cracker, cinnamony, toffee. But then yeah, those those dark fruits are all all up in this shit. The darker, the darker fruits, kind of that PX syrupy. Do you know the cherries we ate tonight? The Luxardo cherries in uh, our cocktails? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Luxardo cherry. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm trying this. I can't, I can't nose this enough. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Mmm. Yep. All of that is in there. This all, one is a mouthful. This one should have been called All the Things. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely get the hint of coffee in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Coffee bean, like fresh coffee, coffee bean. Burnt, burnt toffee. That's from the PX coming through. The darker, the darker fruit notes are in there from that Oloroso, though, too. You get those. I'm not necessarily sorting them out, but I can tell that dark fruit is in there. Um, you know, definitely. Mm, no, there's some of the. the I get like those uh, those dark. You know those uh, the dark honey sticks that you get like a fair and like they're infused with like like dark cherry or like dark fruits. Mm -mm. Getting like these honey like the honey stick mm. characteristic. You like snip off. It's like this little plastic straw and it's filled with honey and they're flavored. And you cut off the top and you just suck the honey down. Mm. That's what I'm feel like I'm getting there. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I have seen those now that you say that. Yeah. You know, cutting the tip off of them. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. It's got like a that bitter coffee funk to it on the back end that is just completely that bottle's gone. Mm -hmm. Damn it. I would have bought this. I think coffee. that one was January's outturn, but yeah, they'll go our deep rich and dried fruit profiles will generally sell out. That's friggin' pretty good. quick. Like the hardy and substantial, the one before I think earlier there was only yeah. I think there were 17 bottles left of it. I'm gonna add some water. Last night with Chad and Sarah, water really helped. This <laughs> I well. drank coffee, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, you had some. You added some more to this. Let me see. What now I still there is a there is a on the tail end of this a heavy maltiness, if not slight peat. Are you, are you getting any smoke char? The the smoke is what reminded me of the like that coffee bean though, like a okay. like a, almost like a quick coffee, mm -hmm. like that was like brewed. You got like the smoke from it. Yeah. 
There's I just can see a, that. There's a hint of it. Now, Chad and Sarah thought it was pretty strong. The me, water, I think, hint. brought out more of a smoke. You think? I, I think thought it so. goes away with on the palate. I think. I don't know the palate, but on the nose, I get a little bit more of the smoke. <laughs> yeah, the gra I just got the graham cracker. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, on the palate goes away. Yeah, I don't really the, get the smoke. It. Yeah, the that water, coffee bean note's kind of gone now. The water brought out more sweetness in it. The water ruined took, it for me. Took, I want the coffee. <laughs> 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 Whiskey throttle. Blind is now turn, uh, tasting. Have five, six samples without water. Then add five drops mm. of water before you move to the next. From back to the start, you will think you have two different tastings in front of you. Now, it's, see this one I like with water. It definitely to me the the mouth feel just got so velvety, um, so <laughs> rich. <laughs> That's right, bro. That's Mark. That's right, Mark. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a marathon, Mark. You gotta sit by sit, buddy. <laughs> Water. Hey, the wrench is in the house. What's going on? The bourbon wrench. How you doing? What's going on, Trev? Um, Trev. Trev Wilson. Richie Z. I see with the wrench as well. Yep, Richie Z. Yeah, forty-one is gone. Says Robert mm -hmm. in Inco. Oh man. Uh, Leanne says, all good on the buy. You're working on some fun plans for this year. Man, it's uh, – dude, this one's fantastic. So probably my favorite profile, the Deep Bridge and Dried Fruits, but especially with that exclusive maturation where this spent 14 years in cherry casks. Which is the, so sweet and complex and dark and rich. Deep, yeah. It's just mm, – it's got like mm, – it's got balls. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's got, it's got guns. <laughs> uh, hey, Eric Evans is in the house. What's up? How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Are you a Falcons fan, M&D? Uh, unfortunately, yes, I am a Falcons fan, a long-suffering Falcons fan. But, yeah, if you don't know the story, short story, uh, long story short, uh, Deion, Deion Sanders is my favorite player growing up when I started playing football. And, uh, you know, he was with the Falcons for kind of the years that I was – I got into them, and he eventually left the team, but I stayed a Falcons fan because I'm loyal like that and probably a little stupid. What is that? I see a dark label. Is that a 29 on the front? Yes. Oh, my God. So this one is not um, sherried, but it is in our old and dignified profile. <clears throat> You'll want to kind of cleanse your palate here. We're, we're at 29 years, our ABV dropped on this one to 49.5%. So this is going to be the lightest whiskey of the night and it might be we probably should have done it before that last one but okay. and then we're gonna then we'll do the then we'll do the, the the vaults collection okay the vaults okay this one is a 29 year old uh cask number 52.43 uh from a second fill ex bourbon barrel so 29 years <laughs> In a second fill. I want to leave a small sample of that. Just saying. All right, Dustin. I'll see what I can do. I don't know. Sugar Kitty's asking the lightest. So, so so why do you why is it the lightest? Because of the proof? Yeah, yeah, because of the four, 49 and a half percent. Yeah. You know, as, as your whiskey ages, it's gonna drop down, it's gonna lose some ABV. Um 49 and a half percent the the age makes up for it. Uh, she said, you bring a bottle like that to Louisiana and I'll provide all the Cajun food you <laughs> <we> can handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, even, in the, is, even in the color, it's light. Yeah, twenty. It's, even at 29 years, it's a second fill ex-bourbon barrel. So this is so, 29 years ex-bourbon. That's it. Uh -huh. Okay, which yep. explains the color. Yeah. So, I mean, that barrel had already been used twice. This is the third time. It's, I mean... It's, it's not picking up that much influence. So we're getting a you want you want a sip. We're getting a good look at the distillate <laughs> character here with this one. Yeah, this is all about the the distillate. Those true characteristics coming out of here. This is um, fifty two point four three. Uh, that's and that's a popular distillery with yeah, us as well. Yeah. So it is a, a coastal distillery. You would say. <sighs> just I, really just on the nose for me, oak little bit of citrus i get citrus and i get like that heathery honey um uh, note that we were talking about earlier yeah. what a, oh man this is turning into all orange mm. orange spice yeah Ooh. 
Man, that's really rich on the nose. You wouldn't think that's something that light yeah. could be that intense, you know? Yeah. Now, with that other on your palate, though, I wouldn't say too much on the first sip. I'd get one sip in, kind of let it coat the palate, and then go to a second sip and let it kind of soak in. <laughs> Jason Busey. Just in case you all want to know, uh, Danes, I'm figuring great Danes, are the nerdiest dog, neediest dogs in the world. Pup just stuck its cold nose on my back so I would pet her. And she rests her slobbery mouth on my arm while I was. <laughs> that sounds like a great thing. <laughs> yeah, when in when you're in my house, it's water. Mm. Not water. Water. There you go. Put it up there. Oh, yeah. And the name on this one is a great name as well. Note to self. Buy this bottle. <laughs> buy this bottle. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, we do have uh, some, some of our whiskeys will end up in the old and dignified uh, flavor profile. And then some of the uh, only uh, a select bunch of the old and dignified will get the vaults collection um, designation. So, man, I'm getting like even I'm getting cream soda. Even though I told you to wait till the second sip to judge it, the first sip of this was delicious. I'm getting cream soda on this, like just all like that. This that is vanilla. Oh my god! This is really a great example of an old scotch. That's just. Time that's taken its time to age in a ex bourbon barrel. So this has gotten for me just on that first sip a little tropical. Yeah, there's a little bit like what you uh, one of the early whiskeys we had, juicy fruit gum. Uh -huh. I don't think it's so much that, but it's gotten this little tropical hit, like melon drizzled with honey. Oh, spice, a little cinnamon too. That thing is just all over the place. Yeah, so, and I think this as a younger whiskey, more of those lighter citrusy notes would be in there. They're gone. There's not, not, not uh, there's not that lighter. Yeah, there's not that lighter. Note. Yeah, um, it's not dark fruits, but it's just not light citrus. It's a lot it's, of oak too, man. The yeah. oak influence on here. And what I find with an older, with a well done older Scotch, or older whiskey in general, even older bourbons. <sighs> The oak tannins from that age of sitting in the barrels really saturate the palate. And that's <laughs> what helps um, distinguish yeah. an older whiskey. Well, Daniel, my, my reaction was for like the viewers, like, because if, if nobody has, you know, you would think, or if no one has gotten to try a scotch that old, you would think maybe it's supposed to be a little bit darker. But um, in this case, it's not. This, because it's a second fill. This is where you get to taste really the maturation, the distillate, as Scott had mentioned. Yeah. And I've had some, uh, I still <laughs> feel sitting here, this to me feels like 29 years ago, it was a lightly peated spirit. And now there is just barely a trace of that lightly peated spirit hanging on. I've been told this distillery doesn't peat. And that I could, I mean, maybe that's possible. I mean, that's, that's very well true. But to me, this still feels like, and it could just be, it's maybe it's some of the oak tannins, maybe it's some of the maltiness. <laughs> but to me, even sitting here now on the very tail end of this, it just feels like there's a very old, slight peat in there. I can't get over this caramelized tangerine that mm. I'm getting on this. <laughs> that is just, it's like, it's not a bright tangerine. It's like someone like just completely charred it. Um, yeah, here we go. I knew you were a good actor. <laughs> um, I was going to look real quick to see if this one is still still available. Available. Uh, let's see yes, here. it is. Oh, is it still available? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little higher. Terrence, uh, Terrence Scott, winding out the night with a Port Charlotte Scottish Barley dating back to Jim McEwen. Oh, hell yeah, Terrence. What? Uh, Port, oh, Charlotte, Port Charlotte, Charlotte, Scottish Barley, going back to Jimmy mm -hmm. Ewan days. Yeah. Some of my favorite, some of my favorite uh, expressions. Um, that Scotch has a mortgage with and two kids. <laughs> I was just looking. It's not too bad. Five hundred and forty-five dollars. Five hundred forty-five for a twenty Lord. for a twenty-nine-year-old single malt Scotch. That's yeah. really not that bad. And this, and there's, this, and, and this distillery can also give you a like a like a waxy. Type of note too, and a lot of and a lot of coastal. Yeah, the coastal. Of, yeah, you'll, you may pick up that coastal sea salt kind of air. I'm, and I don't know that I necessarily get any of that, 
maybe that is what's causing that kind of that very what I think is a what you on, think is, is a peat is very 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 light peat. That might be what it, it is. Could maybe be just maybe a bit of a saltiness. salty, malty, you know, tail end of this, like a salted caramel. That's good. <laughs> this is a good one. That's yeah, really it good. I mean, honestly, though, I think the flavors of the last one, though, will probably more like blew me away with that mm -hmm. coffee and that chocolate bitterness and graham oh, yeah. cracker. Yeah. That thing was ridiculous. Well, of course, that's gone. I can buy this one, though. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, so 29 years ago, there was a lot of mildly peated barley in the unpeated malt. So possible. Yeah. I mean, maybe. Um. All the words and all the notes. Yeah, I know. It's 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 tough. <laughs> yeah, like an old sea salt. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Jumbo, this is why I like SMWS. You will get to see some amazing potential the silly represented, mm -hmm. even with the younger releases. Yeah, 529. Um, yep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, I mean, this is. And that's the, that's the other beauty of it. Like each, so each bottle that we've had have all been just completely different. Uh, based on the maturation, the distillate, all of it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm digging this, man. And, this the, is good. and finally, for the last one, we'll move to the Isla region, which we haven't been to yet. Oh, we're, getting, we're getting smoky and sweet. <laughs> Hello from Columbus. What's up, Tyler Hawkins? Thanks for uh, chiming in. This is uh, Scott's first time in Columbus. So, Sparkle out, Scott, can one buy multiple bottles per barrel? Uh, it depends. I, I, Majority of our releases, yeah, you can buy as many bottles as you want. Yeah. Sometimes, depending on the distillery um, or something like this, there may be a one one bottle per customer limit. Mm -hmm. So, now I don't know that there's anything. Say you ordered a bottle and a month later it's still available. You pro probably very well could be able to order another bottle at that time. Okay. But you wouldn't be able to stack two or three into, a, you know, that first order. Yeah. Yeah, God. Yeah, it's it. This is it's good. I, I've I've had some older scotches, um, and like I say, it depends on on the whiskey itself. It depends on the distillery. It depends on the cask, um, how they age. I've had some that aren't that good. This is a very good example of a twenty nine year old scotch that's just been allowed to take its just time, sit and just sit in a second fill ex bourbon uh -huh. barrel and become glorious. Now let me let me ask you this: how how does Scotchman with Society. I would feel like if I own the distillery, so this specific distillery, like like how like man, SNWS getting access to these casks. Like, why would they be giving up whiskey this old with these casks? Well, we we may have bought this when it was 12 years old. Oh, okay. That makes so sense. So we, we do have uh in the UK we do have a warehouse. Okay. But um, it, it could be we buy it and we take it to the warehouse. It could be we buy it and the distillery keeps it, you know, or it could be we buy it at 15 years or when it's ready to bottle and, and we, we let it, it sit. No. So some, you know, and then on the other hand, some, some distilleries have become easier to work with. Some have become harder to work with because of demand. So, I mean, there's, but a lot of them, we have multiple casks in storage already from some, some of those uh, distilleries that are becoming harder to, to source from. Yeah. We've already got, we've, you've already got stuff in the bank. Aging. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, or maybe even like we buy this in a second or in, in a second Phil X bourbon barrel and someone says, let's try putting that in the Oloroso barrel for six months and then we'll move it to an Oloroso barrel for six months. And then, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> everybody loses their mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cohen, I agree. Those falafels are ridiculously good. Master John, first time in Columbus, make sure to grab a Therminator and a Schmitz Puff Pastry. Are you talking about the cream puff? Yeah. We um Schmidt's Sausage House, which is a which is a very traditional German restaurant. They make I'm cream, glad that's where you went with that. They, they make cream puffs that are about the size of your head. Oh. Yeah. And and even though they're that big, they're still like light and fluffy. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Why don't we have one of those tonight? Because uh, it's a little bit far, and I don't know oh. if they're going to close by the time we get out of well, here. No, you should have had one on hand ready. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I should have. But you know what I do want now still is jelly donuts. Thank you. Let's just, let's just leave that one there. Just leave that one there. And then we'll grab our last whiskey from the SMWS. <laughs> I don't know what, what you'll have in mind or 
ready, but this one. Holy hell. So this is oh. the granddaddy. Chad and Sarah got to try this one uh, last night as well. So, I don't know if I'll let the Scotch Four Dummies try this one on Friday night. Sorry, Mark. Know. Sorry, Mark. Yeah. We'll You're see. out of luck because I'm going to drink all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, like I said, the... Uh, the 29 year old we just tasted that is in our old and dignified profile uh, a select few of those uh, from our old and dignified they'll designate vaults collection basically it's going to get its own um display box here and stuff that it's a question for you <laughs> <laughs> I, I do that in the morning yeah he only talks to him in the a.m when bart's when bart's awake Oh my god, that's the one I was trying to get Mike to buy yesterday before it sold out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Guess what? It's here. It's here. It's here, Dustin. You want to take a quick drive out from uh, Cincy, Dustin? Just saying. We're here. So this is it, huh? Yep. Yep. Uh, all right. So we're we're kind of making a shift here, guys. This is now called Savory Peat Smoke. Uh, number 29, 26 years old. Second fill X bourbon. This is an Isla. Oh my God. But so so explain at, the vaults a little bit, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. So there's the, the and this is in the old and dignified profile as well. Our tasting panel in the UK, they do a great job of sourcing the whiskeys, tasting them, saying, OK, it's ready to go. They're the ones that select. OK, um, the first one, this this old and dignified, they tasted and said it's definitely old and dignified profile. Yeah. Put that one over. They tasted this one. So, they so said, this okay, so was this a this, vault or no? No, no, it wasn't no. a vault. So just old and dig. That's what I say. And so a handful of your old of our old and dignified profile is going to get the vaults collection designator. Okay, they, is that just based on rarity? Yeah. Or, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. This okay. is they're saying this is the good stuff. This is the creme de la creme. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, twenty nine point two seven eight. So it's distillery twenty nine. A lot of people know what that one is. It's a very well-known Isla distillery. And this is the 278th cask we've uh, sourced from them. Oh, it's dude. 26 years old. Second fill X bourbon barrel. But look at the ABV on it. So we did the 29-year-old before this. It was 49 and a half percent. So look at this ABV one at 26. One. Holy hell. Yeah. I don't know if I, you guys would be able to see that. Let's see if it focuses up here. There you go. You guys see that? Look at the ABV on that. 50 Is it 57.5? 57. 57 even. 57 even. 57. So this one there it held its ABV quite a bit better. I mean, that's just that's time. just that's the beauty of maturation. Right. You never know. Right. So we'll get the water back up here. Water. Water. Into cooler. <laughs> water in the cooler. <laughs> water in the cooler. <laughs> now we're getting into a little bit of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know what that happened. was a, that was a yeah, that was a yeah. Brooklyn. Arnold, that was an Arnold visits Brooklyn. <laughs> Get to now do it, do it now, drink it. See, so yeah, unfortunately, yesterday this one was still available. Now, this oh. just went on sale though, um, Tuesday, so it sold out within 24 yeah, hours. Whiskey Central's losing her mind. <laughs> 26 year old cast strength. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to go off track. Why are you a Falcons fan? Oh, yeah, I mentioned it before, Rob H. Uh, Getting into football growing up, I became a Deion Sanders fan when he was on Atlanta Falcons, and I've been a fan ever since, even though he left and played for the fucking Cowboys. Whatever. I I, I try to block that out of my, my memory. Uh, it's so light. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, these Islas. I mean, you get a really light whiskey. Again, this is just kind of maturation. It's, a, well, it's another second fill it's barrel. It's another second fill barrel. So most of the color from that wood has already been drawn out by the bourbon. Yep. And then by the first round of scotch that went through. Yeah. So you're not going to get. So really, again, we're talking about a good study in the distillate and the peat and what's involved in yeah. this, mm -hmm. making this beautiful 26-year-old uh, yeah. whiskey. Jesus, Lord. Yeah. Um, my liquor store called me one day. It was, it was a few years ago. And they said, hey, we've got a 20-year-old spring bank single cask. Do you want a bottle? Yeah. I said, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> I showed up to pick it up and it was, it's lighter than this. It was half of this color. I mean, it was, you could almost see through it. Yeah. It was almost clear. Really? And for, and it was from refill. I think it just said refill barrel. So that could have been like three or four, the third or fourth use. Yeah. I'm clearing me out here. And I thought, 
And it, it was like 200, 220 bucks. And I thought, man, I just got ripped off. I'm like, look at this whiskey. I'm like, it's so, it's so, it's like pale. It's like, yeah. I go, it looks like a six year old whiskey. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best whiskeys I've had. I mean, it's, <clears throat> there is so much flavor in it. It's amazing. So that taught me, which I knew before that, don't judge a whiskey based on its color. That can be very deceiving. Oh. But yeah. And again, all natural color, you know, no color added. Um, which is a big thing with scotch. I mean, some some just some distillers uh add color to their whiskey in Scotland to give it a little bit more of a desirable color profile, but SMWS does not do that, no color added, all yeah. non-chill filtered, yeah. right from the cask into the bottle. Yep. Do go to smwsa.com and for more information. Uh, we've got the special running again, $99 to join, $50 yeah. off. And also go to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society America YouTube channel, which I'm running. I came over from the Scotch Test Dummies, uh, posted more content there, but go subscribe to our channel. Mm -hmm. Is that okay if I say that? You can say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> go to SM, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society America's hey, YouTube hey, channel. I won't, I won't tell Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, the link down is in the description. Uh, go down and subscribe. You can... Scott's running uh, a lot of the uh, the tastings for the outturns, and you could kind of get his um, his specific you know impression on the whiskey when the outturns release. Also, you get great people like Ben. You get Jenna. He'll bring on some other folks as well. Um, the junkies have been on there. You have um, Chad and Sarah on last night. Scott's four dummies. So I think what we're seeing is a really nice collaboration from the entire community to mm -hmm. kind of shed a spotlight on what SNWS is doing. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, oh there, there, I expected the Pete. So to me, Pete is like rye. The older uh, uh, rye whiskey ages, the less, the less harsh the it rye, gets. Yeah. The less harsh it the gets. The rye became, becomes tamer. Yeah. Generally, that happens with peat as well. So most people like a an eight to 10 year old peated whiskey because the peat is strong in it. At 26 years, I expected the peat to really be weighing down in this, and it's not. It's still there. It's pretty present it, on the nose. It's still there, but it's not the 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 backbone that I expect from that distillery. It's it's not the normal punch. It's not the get. normal punch. Right. Yeah. But for 26 years, there is more peat there than I expected. There's Ooh. oak. And again, though, this distillery. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, man. This distiller, distillery, generally, you'll get a lot of lighter citrus notes, vanilla notes with. They're got, gone here. It's so yeah. it's old. It's, you got oak. Has, you got top shelf Dustin with his bougie palette. 25 plus yeah. year Pete is where it peaks. Yeah. <laughs> um, those game changer players are rare. And Dion was one. 49ers have one currently in Debo. Yeah, Debo's the man. Mm. Yep. And that's the thing I think that, you know, bourbon drinkers or even just drinkers that haven't tried anything pete don't realize it's the how the smoke i, I get it the iodine the medicinal quality to it can turn some people off mm -hmm. especially if you've never had it before it's like what the fuck is that um but then you get into once your palate gets used to it a little bit and i tell everybody this listen your palate gets used to the peat some really beautiful sweet flavors and complexity comes through once you kind of get through all that um, you try some higher age ones like this, and my God, I gotta taste it. Yeah, I already, already did. Mm. It's still soaking into the palate. The oak tannins are still there. This is older. You can tell oak tannins are soaking into my palate. That's the oakiest peated <laughs> whiskey I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, the light citrus notes here are gone. Mm -hmm. No um, citrus. Nope. Uh, there, there's there's some sweet. Yeah, oh, they're sweet. They're sweet. I would say brown sugar. Citrus has turned into a, a darker brown sugar, caramely, um, brulee. It's it's. I was you just. I was just gonna say it tastes like creme brulee. Creme brulee, like yeah. smoked creme brulee. Creme brulee. Yeah. Yep. On the on the beach from a and campfire, it's, and it's so silky and um and and oily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah this is a good one you know what that one that we had uh, a little bit ways back the one that sold out what was that one called the one that we loved the coffee one 
Oh, yeah. Um, a Deep Soul. A Deep Soul. That was probably still my favorite of the night, but this one is making a play mm-hmm. right now because this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, the age has replaced the citrus. The, those younger citrusy notes are gone. We've got smoke. We've got earth. We've got campfire. Oh, it just has, it's the perfect balance of smoke and sweet and caramel and oak. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, just to let you guys know, Scott's for dummies. You're not getting any of this. <laughs> That's a good amount. It's almost left. no, it's almost gone now. That's a good. Oh yeah, it's, it's almost gone. Yeah. Sorry guys. Sorry Mark. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's ridiculous. Uh, let's see. What does Bourbon Bar? He says, how does it compare to Laga? Sorry, but I can't see which Scotch is that. Um, Devo's fun to watch. Um, glad to touch the tail in the stream. Jell Scott is sharing that twenty nine ball bottle there. I was too late to snag one. <laughs> They went quick. Scott, are you touring out to Cali at some point? So this tr- this trip, really, when I looked at it, where um, everybody was at, and people that I know and have collaborated with in the past, you know, from Chad and Sarah to Jason, yeah, to Dan and Sean, and to the Scotch Four Dummies, it just kind of made this loop right now. Yeah, so, so it's kind of like a perfect storm. Yeah, yeah, it was a good uh, trip to plan, and uh, it worked out real well. So I hope, though this is successful enough in the future i can do more i want to do more traveling to more youtube stuff yeah so. dude, you gotta because more people should be tasting the stuff because it is unique yeah it's got like this mushroom funky thing going on earthy soil, earthy soil off of, yeah. based off of that that i get with it yeah it's like a portobello mm. like mm. a meaty portobello mushroom that's been cooked on the barbecue Portobello. So, I haven't said Portobello, I don't think, in any ever video, but it's, it tastes like Portobello. Uh-oh. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second, guys. we still got audio. Let me, switch. Uh, let me just switch the camera here. Yeah. It's a shittier it's... camera, but there we go. That'll work. That'll work for now. Yeah. Let it cool down. Yeah, we got to let it cool down. Oh, my, I got some hot <coughs> dust. Let me turn that off a little bit. All right. So uh, with the older whiskeys, at some point, this one even, I would guess, at 26 years old from this distillery on Isla, it's been stored in a, a dirt, a, a warehouse that has a dirt floor. Now you just covered the camera this morning. Oh, I did. Sorry. Oh, there ahead. you go. There you go. So I would, which is called a dunnage warehouse, uh, one of those warehouses that has the dirt floors. And sometimes you pick up a lot of those, that mushroom, <sighs> soil, kind of dank note is going to come from that. Uh, soil based ground warehouse that dunnage so you'd say it's kind of that dunnage note it's mm-hmm. barely barely here with this one yeah i've had i've had it a little bit more pronounced in some whiskeys that's probably that earthy soil mushroom note that you're noting yeah the mushroom is is very prevalent to me i, I mean it's like it's all portobello mm. i mean but yeah but it's also oh yeah let's see what the water does to it Give me a couple drops. There we go. So, Jed and Sarah, this was, they liked, We I, I gave them a nine-year-old peated whiskey, a Highland peated whiskey, and it had a lot more citrus and kind of vanilla and powdered sugar notes. Um, mid-level peat. They didn't mind it. I think the sweetness and the citrus notes kind of helped. This one, they were both kind of like mm. <laughs> a little too much. The citrus was gone. You know, that powdered sugar kind of sweetness that's there with some of them are, was gone. This one, the age and the peat to me is is beautiful. It's really aged very nicely. Yeah, this is a beautiful whiskey. This this is yeah. all, this is one of the most well-balanced aged peated whiskeys I've had. I would agree. It just kind of hits every every note. And the viscosity of it, I think, is what sells it too. It's yeah. creamy. Yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> It's a good one. Good one for faux show. He's like, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's okay. It's all right. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> what does Top Shelf Dustin say? Wow, no citrus on a well-aged Lafroy. That's weird. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not getting really any citrus on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit, but not much at all. There, I mean, there, there's some sweetness underlying. To me, I think the ci citruses at this point have turned to a, a brown sugar. Yeah. Like uh, I said, it's all it's, burnt, uh, it's, all, it's like creme brulee for me yeah. all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More I mean, depending on the palate, if your palate is prone to or sensitive to citrus flavors, maybe you could pick it up in this, but I'm just not getting it at all. Mm -hmm. But I think those oak tannins more than make up for it. This one, when you drink, you're like, this is an older whiskey. Yeah, that citrus note isn't there, but it don't need it. <laughs> it doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind it not having citrus because the creme brulee notes and the earthiness and the, oh, yeah. that mushroom, that umami, as they call it, mm -hmm. type yeah. profile to it is what's selling it. Yep. Damn. Yeah. Very nice. Ooh, a little, uh, I just got a little smoked peanut, roasted. I'll peanut. I'll try to I'll try to snag you a sample, Dustin. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. It's up to him though. Yeah. All right. Damn, dude. <laughs> that was that. You know, honestly, even as much as I love the old the old soul, whatever it was called, deep soul, deep soul. That's the, that. This one might be my favorite. This just because I haven't had. I don't think I've ever had a peated whiskey like that. Yeah. I agree. Woo! Dylan Moss says more Lafroy, Springbank, Octomore. <laughs> he likes the peat. This is one you could definitely that ounce and a half pour. If you get, if you wanted to, you could make it last for two hours. You could sit down no. with a movie. Yeah, you could sit with, with that with pour forever. this and just because just even now sitting it. here, I'm still tasting. I'm still tasting all those it, same notes, and I'm still and the finish is still going. It doesn't stop. <laughs> doesn't let up. It's like Liam Neeson. In the movie Taken, yeah, he doesn't stop. Yeah, just keeps going. I will find you. I will find you, and I, I will kill you. This bottle has a special set of skills. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Yeah, and it comes with a box. That, that should be the name: a special set of skills. That should be another. The next vaults release should be a special <laughs> set of skills. I'm coining it, Jenna Ben. If you're watching, special set of skills next vault release. Yes. All right, well, that does it for our SMWS tasting. Thanks, Jason. I know, we, or we, I mean, you got more time, and I think we may pull out some yeah, other dude, stuff. Yeah, we, we, we got another, like, 40 minutes. I'm ready to yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I have some but, SMWS bottles there that I know you said you want to try. Well, do we want, do you want to have other stuff that you want to move I on do to? Have, I do have other we stuff. We can do. We, we can give we it a break do here. more SMWS. All right, All right well, here. For, thank uh, you for letting me do my spiel, though, on that. And, All right, so and, you ready to uh, enter the, the Thunderdome? Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's let's see what we got here. So you said you've never tried. You've never had this before, right? I do not believe I have a bottle, but it is unopened, and I don't think I've ever had. Oh yeah, actual... that's a good idea, Justin. Too. Oh yeah, let me get that out to Whiskey Dick. Okay, um, I'm not even looking. I'm not gonna look at the com no, I'm not I'm gonna not look at the comments. Looking, so I don't looking. know what they're talking about, and then I'll just right, let's let see me, what me, uh, what you do to me. Let me grab some shit here. Um, While he's doing that, real quick, again, go to smwsa.com for more information on memberships. I'm trying not to look. Uh, we're running a special this week through Valentine's Day. You can buy your significant other a uh, membership for $99 and get a $50 gift card. Let's clean this glass out a little bit here for you. And go to the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society uh, America's YouTube channel and subscribe as well. Helps me out. The boss will say, man, those people really like Scott. Oh, yeah. Wait a second. And I'm not, I know I'm not looking at the camera, but I'm trying not to look at the screen here. Yeah, we so. have, we have some stuff here. Let me, let me give him a little bit of this. Yeah. Try that first. And then I'm going to get some other stuff out here that I got to get. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can look at the screen. I'm not going to look at the comments. So I'm not going to focus. I can actually, I'm getting old enough. I can look at something and not focus. I'm It must be a couple of years old because they've started to make it where they don't. When if you're live streaming or just using it to stream with, they don't. What? The cameras they don't overheat now. Is that one a couple of years old? It's just because it's a, and I don't know why it overheated because the uh, the watch we call it's out, but I also had the I had it plugged in, so sometimes it gets kind of a little overheated, but we should be okay. So mine, I've had mine on for like 
six hours before for team meetings. It's the it's the that. Sony man, the Sony yeah. cameras on some will give yeah. an overheat thing. So. Okay, let's get into that one. Wow. <sighs> okay, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna have some fun blind pours for Scott. That's a little different nose. I'm not sure what's. <laughs> I going definitely on don't here. need a new camera. It's just it, it tends to heat up sometimes, but I don't know why it did this time. Um. Okay, I mean, this very well, it could be a bourbon. I was expecting a bourbon, but it doesn't nose def <laughs> necessarily <laughs> like a bourbon. It almost smells more scotchy. I'm trying to source it out. There's, It's fruity. Sweet. That's what I'm getting on the nose. Let me see. Let me get in on the palate on this. Yeah, go for it, man. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh. There's a little malt in there. Tastes like. Yeah, pretty it's much they get overheated to the whiskey porn. I think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> too much steam too much steam from these that lafrog i think did it the the camera couldn't handle it there's a little there's a little mint on this oh here's that here's that bottle okay got that nice and rich nice finish it sets in and goes I mean, that taste, it, it seems more like it's an American single malt, something along those lines. There's got some malted barley maybe in it. You might be overthinking it. Cinnamon. But I actually, I actually think it's interesting that you're saying that because this is a different profile. When I show you what's in that glass, you might be surprised. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's, so cinnamons, caramels, some, there is some bourbon notes. There's, I still think there's some malted barley single malt in this. Yeah. Um, The pine made me think Colorado or even New Mexico. Well, I've gotten it more with Colorado whiskeys, but yeah, it's good. I like it. You know what it is? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Glendronic 26 year Pedro Jimenez. Well, it's definitely malted barley. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think my palate must be a little soaked. Well, you can't give me after a peated whiskey. <laughs> I know you're. Yeah, the peated whiskey probably killed pine. you. Yeah, but when you were saying like pine and you were saying like the savory notes, yeah, this is probably one of the more spicy, savory. I, I did not expect that from a 26 year old Glendronic. Yeah, it's got like this bite to it that's really nice. That I'm not sure I I expected this to be an absolute candy bomb and it wasn't. Right. Yeah. No, it's not. Which is why I was a fan. It's a so this is a Glendronic uh, single cask, guys. It's twenty six years old. Um, there you go. Yeah, like the PX sherry notes were gone. Were, were gone though, because it, it was PX punching on it. PX, yeah, yeah. I can still taste that. Look, the the little twenty nine. All right, we'll have some more water. You need more water? Yeah, you can have a sip of that. Woo. <laughs> I'm gonna pour the next one for you. I really want to get your. Okay. Here, just look the other way. That right. proves to anybody watching though that I wasn't looking. <laughs> this is what I'm pouring, Scott, right now, because I want to get his. Uh, I want to get his his general opinion on this one. All right. All right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. It's a tough to do a blind, but you know we're just having fun. <laughs> wow, looking for any distinguishing. My nose might be shot. Uh, Scott, real quick question here. I want to take a little break. Uh -huh. Can Scott talk at all about the three bottles you have an option to buy with joining the society? Yeah, you bet. 
Yeah. So we have actually, so you can, you can join and just buy a membership. And then we have what we call our bun membership bundles. Uh, one of the bundles has a, a tasting kit with it, which you have around here somewhere. Cause that's part of it. Yeah. This is part of the tasting kit. Yeah. Um, we have a tasting kit with the membership bundle. It comes with this water dropper set. It's got two of our, it's got two glasses uh, it's got and then it's got, Society and it's got three bottles. Three well, samples, three sample sample bottles of three different whiskeys. 375 milliliter bottles. That's one of the options. I believe that one's 195. Mm -hmm. And then there's three options for three different bottles. So there's um, <laughs> one. Um, I'm going. I could. I could pull it. Let me pull it up here just so I don't misquote it. Because I'm right on the website. Um, three different bottles, kind of, there's kind of a, a lower end bottle, a mid grade, and then a higher end bottle that you get with the membership. Um, all three are pretty nice. I know the middle one was a, was a Pete to Isla whiskey, oh, a 10 year, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for the membership. And I don't, let me look right now to see what the younger one was, I believe a young and sprightly. I'm almost there. I'm, I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There's the tasting kit, 195. So, okay, 150 gets you a ju juicy oak and vanilla a bottle, nine years old, 122.41 is the cask number. It's a Highland. That's $150. So that'll get you the membership plus the bottle. That's basically $50 off. And then uh, the next one up is the 10-year peated whiskey from Isla. It's $180. So for $30 more, you can get the membership. And then the 10-year-old Isla, uh, cast number 53.374. That's a well-known Isla distillery. And again, that's basically about $50 off if you bought those separate. And then the, the highest end is $215. It's a 17-year-old, a cast number 7.258 in our sweet, fruity, and mellow profile. And it's a space hide. Um, the first one, I didn't say the region, uh, a Highland. A Highland in our Juicy Oak and Vanilla profile. So it really just kind of depends on uh, what you've had, if you've had any scotches before, which, where your profile lies and whatnot. If you haven't had scotch and you don't know if you like peated whiskeys, I would probably stay away from the middle one there, the <laughs> Isla yeah. whiskey, yeah. Uh, and probably just go with either the base or the um, Space Side either the Highland or the space side one, but yeah, I mean, those are good deals. We have a lot of people, pro more people sign up for one of the bundles than they do just the membership. Before you kind of kill your palate with the one I poured you just have a, I know you, you said you wanted to taste this one and I, I wanted to kind of have you taste it before you got into the one, the blind one I poured you. This is the William Ruel okay. you said you wanted to try 128 proof. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So Scott and I were just having a little William Rue Weller. This one is 128 proof. It's almost gone, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> now you never you never had a WLW? You have one, but you've never opened it, right? Or right. you're waiting on it? Right. I don't yeah. think I've ever had a sample. No. Now, I've had several stags. I love the stags. Yeah. They're probably my favorite bourbons in, in all yeah. actuality. What's up, Mike M? Stag, the, the the daddy stag is hard to beat. Yeah, that one hard is to that one's got a great yeah. up front as soon as I got it in there just started taking over a honeyed sweetness and citruses and vanillas that weeded bourbon profile going on yeah it just it's saturating yeah it's got it's one of those uh i did want to mention from anybody that's uh from ohio that's watching um tomorrow tomorrow i have been uh i've been asked to go down to wild turkey and choose, I'm not sure how many barrels. It's going to be about 10 to 15 barrels of the next Russell's Reserve single barrel picks for Ohio for the Father's Day releases. So um, if anybody in Ohio is watching and you guys get excited for those Russell's picks, I'm going to get to go down and choose 10 to 15 barrels with Bruce Russell of Wild Turkey. And I cannot fucking wait to do this tomorrow. Um, and even, even more so for you guys to hopefully taste some great barrels that would be selected for the, uh, for the father's day releases in Ohio, uh, coming up this year. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. So I, uh, when, when they asked me to, to go this, uh, this year, 
I was like, we're, 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 wait, wait, we're going on site to Wild Turkey. Like, and how many barrels are we picking? It's like 10 to 15. Okay, sign me up. That is not that's not a hard decision. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Yeah. Yes. So. So yeah. So uh, all the Ohio Russell's picks uh, we'll be picking tomorrow. There's a few. There's a good amount of pallets involved. I don't know how much say I'll have, but I will try my hardest to pick the best barrels for you guys for Ohio for uh, for Father's Day. So that's right. Will, William LaRue Weller is good. Stag is better. You like Stag over that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Stag still brings a depth and just a, a, a darker, you know, more caramels. Yep. Uh, brown sugars, oak. That the the Stags just have that nice old mm -hmm. bourbon or it, more, older bourbon palette soaking tannins that just yeah. soak in i mean that's still good come on, where's your bottle of kentucky <laughs> yeah i don't have that bottle yet now um well now i need all of the ohio russell's picks <laughs> okay so i'll get in the last blind or the second blind yeah go for that one yeah, now into. i'm curious of your thoughts on that one uh oh yeah so the giveaway tonight guys we're going to be doing um we're going to be giving me three way three giveaways uh three different sets of some of these um smws cask uh cask strength scotches that we've been uh trying tonight and maybe one or two mm. others that i've been uh i, don't know I can do that i yeah. know you are but no no i have mine oh yours yeah 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 for you guys to yours. try yeah, yeah mine you got that and then uh and then i might I'll, and then one of them will also be throwing in a fusion six uh fusion six bottle from bartstown bourbon company so um so yeah we have three sets of samples going out to three different winners tonight um let's see here time to go online for now for those um yeah it's a dream pick to go on i mean i said yeah that it was a bucket list experience like three weeks ago and now it's happening and not only are we just picking like one or two barrels we're picking like 15 fucking barrels for all of ohio so it's it's crazy Stag Jr. is better than William Newweller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. uh, Stag, Stag William Newweller. Yeah, I think some yeah. of the stags, some of the good stags, are just so rich and has that depth yeah. to it. I I agree. Yeah, not in Ohio, but in Jason. City, that, I, I mean, that's good. It's got a lot of punch to it. There's a lot of flavor in there. Yeah, I stole it. And it's mine it now. Just, it <laughs> just doesn't have the finish that the stag has. Uh, can I enter? I want to try some of us. Just kidding, on entertain, but I want to try SMWS. I could send you some samples, Ben. If you try, if you, if you get me that bottle we've been talking about. <laughs> um, this there's nothing really jumping out at me here. This is good. It's rich. It's depth that it doesn't have the punch of the William Larue Weller. Just oh, that one. ABV wise, it's oh, definitely yeah. lower. Yeah, it's lower. Yeah, it's still got a nice palate. Um, I got a lot of cherries, oak. Terrell Stewart, not in the giveaway, but I would love to throw a bottle of Glenfiddich 14 year being. I heard it mentioned earlier. Mm. We could do that. We'll give away a bottle of Glenfiddich 14. Thanks, Darrell. Darrell's just a friggin' man. Darrell is such the man that he's going to be part of the uh, Mash and Journey um, Four Roses pick we have going on uh, in at the beginning of the month. So, all right, we'll throw that in the mix. Uh, New Cal, yeah, Wade Ward, New Camera Phone. Yeah, I saw that. The camera seems to be doing okay. Uh, cheers to Whiskey Tube crossovers and to picking 10 to 15 Russell's barrels. Living the dream, boys. Yep, we're trying. That's some nice caramels, cinnamons. Uh, Scott's favorite unpeated single malt. That's a good question. What's your favorite unpeated single malt? And you can't say Boone Hobbin because it's lightly peated. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna drink the rest of the William Weller. There's I love sherry scotches. That's probably when I, I'll ask people, you know, what's your favorite what I call genre of whiskey? Mine is sherried scotch. I love sherry scotches. Sherry. Um, and there's a couple there. Glendronics are very good and McAllen's probably top my list. Glendronics? Yeah. So let me ask you, what did you feel when you heard that Glendronic was going to the chill filter? I hated it. Hated it like most people out there, probably. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you done a comparison so, yet? No, and the fact is, I haven't had um, any. I, all all of my Glendronics that I have are older bottlings from when Billy Walker was there, and I haven't even tried 
any newer stuff from there. I've heard you now, uh, and people Likewise, like what's everyone. been coming out. Mm -hmm. But recently, they did make the decision, which is probably more Brown Foreman, because they're the ones that bought Windronic mm -hmm. to chill filter. Yeah, um, at least the twelve and the fifteen, maybe the eighteen year. Which I don't understand why they would do that. Yeah. Um, that's probably more of a corporate decision for some reason. Picking a favorite unpeated is harder than picking a favorite peated. Mm. Picking a favorite peated is hard. Mm. Yeah. Well, remember Scott mm. isn't Scott isn't so much a peated guy. Yeah, um, I'm more sherry. He's more sherry. Bart is the peated monster yeah. of the of the duo. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Bart would tell you Ardbeg all day long, and and I'd probably actually tell you Ardbeg. <laughs> Ardbeg does some just does some good whiskeys. Uh, and, and Bart will argue that there, there, there's no need to go source all these special releases and dark and committee releases because their core range is is their chill phenomenal. filtering the 12, 15, 18, and yes, the twenty one. Uh, yeah, shit. Yeah, Scott definitely knows his sherry scotch. I mean, <laughs> he definitely does. I hated when Rachel Barry got the job, Glendronic. I knew the ruining was on its way, and it sure enough happened. You know, people, though, she was responsible. So the, the 15 revival used to be exclusively Oloroso. And when she got in there, she moved it to Oloroso and PX finished. And some people were up in arms about that at first. But then, I, I mean, Roy Aquavite, very well known. I respect him. YouTuber, yeah. Yeah. whiskey. He's in Scotland. He loves the he loves the, the PX and Oloroso Glendronic 15. And, but I haven't tried it. All I've had is the older bottlings. Um, I actually haven't even tried anything newer. I have but, the. I actually found a bottle of the newer uh, non-chill filter twelve year. Okay. Which I'll be doing a video on to see if there is you know a big difference there. Yeah. But we'll see. I still say to me out, off of the shelf. I mean, if here's here's a question I pose to people: You're, You've been traveling all day. You've been on the airplane, right? Mm -hmm. Six hour flight. You gone to an airport. You're, you're lugging your bag with you. You get in the Uber, the taxi, you get to the airport or to the hotel, right? Yeah. You're tired. And you and across the hotel, you see the hotel bar. And you're walking up there and you think, oh, please, God, just have what whiskey? Oh. To me, it's Macallan 12. Just have Macallan 12. Really? Macallan? Over Macallan. over over Glendronic twelve? No, you got to think though. Just please have what? What's just, the chances? Just, what are the chance? Like the, the easiest the small, chances? Yeah. Smallest to have bar, anything. What What do you just open? They have. Oh God! Just have Wild Turkey one hundred and one or Rare Breed. I mean, Wild Turkey one hundred and one. I've been in restaurants before. Yeah. Uh, within the last year, and limited, you know, selection of whiskeys or bourbons, and I and I've had Wild Turkey. I'm like, I'll take a while a one hundred and one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a standby. I mean, it's you know, it's going to be you good. know, it's going to be good, solid, yeah. cheap, but actually, still, I would probably take McAllen 12 over Glendronic 12. Really? Uh huh. Okay, yeah, uh, McAllen 12 is Oloroso and PX as well. It's a little bit sweeter. I love the McAllen 12, I believe, is, is just exclusive Oloroso. It's got a little bit darker notes in it that I really like. I always have a bottle of McAllen 12 around, and it's getting expensive. All right, quick fire question. You ready? Yes. Johnny Walker Blue, overrated or underrated? Overrated. There you go. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I mean, it's a good whiskey, though, too. But It's all right. Now, I'll tell you, though. I that, feel like that's the whiskey for guys that have, like, for dudes that own, like, two bottles of whiskey. Because they're so smooth. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people, I think, just because of the price point on it, that it's the whiskey to have. Now, it has a special place with me because that was one of the first expensive whiskeys. And, of course, I was a novice. <laughs> But I shared it with my dad at each Christmas. Of course, my dad passed away in 2015, so I no longer get to do that. Yeah. But I can remember yeah. sharing Johnny Walker Blue with him in the early days for several Christmases in a row. So did you try that one yet? I have, yeah. I was giving some notes on it there. This is the one um, definitely not as high-proofed as the William LaRue Weller. Mm -hmm. um, nice cinnamons, caramels. I forget what else notes I was giving now, but... You were reading some. Do you do, do you taste anything? Uh, what else? You what do you taste on the pal on that one? Hmm. I think I'm fried. You're fried. Um, caramels, brown sugars. So this was the Chattanooga whiskey. The one that it's 95 proof. So you're right. It's definitely lower. Yeah. But this is a Scotch cask finish they did. So this is so Chattanooga whiskey out of Tennessee. It's, they have a Tennessee high malt. So they they have a high malt bourbon mash bill, and they finished it in some Isla casks, and that's what you got. 
I don't get any Isla characteristics there. But I, I, I feel like I you, thought would. you would. I thought you were playing me again. So I was like, man, it just seems like this. There's some single malt character going. I, on I feel. I feel like you would. <laughs> yeah, but but it. But I mean, you're right. It's it's a high malt. But I feel like maybe because of all the peat we've had already. Oh, this is my could be too subtle for it you. Could be a subtle hint. It's just subtle. It's there. just subtle. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's good, right? It is good. Yeah. This is the Chattanooga Scotch cask. Yeah. That's interesting for sure. Uh, let's see here. Overrated and overpriced are different. Well, yeah, that's true. So, I think I think good Johnny Walker Blues both. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good. Wait, Johnny game. Walker Blue? Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred twenty. It wouldn't be bad. Yeah, yeah. I but two hundred and whatever they starting for uh, now. Yeah, there it's up there. Yeah. In fact, well, when I was buying it, even though years ago, I'd buy it with like a Christmas time with a two glass set. Yeah. It'd be like one hundred and sixty. Yeah, like one hundred sixty bucks. Yeah. Um, so yeah. your house catches on fire. You got to run. You can only grab one bottle. One bottle. What are you taking with you? Son of a bitch. One bottle. Come on. The house is on fire. You got to go. You got to go. Uh, <laughs> come on, I'm, come on. I'm burning right now. I'm on fire. Literally. You died. Yeah, man. The, I'm probably the fire take, department's trying to risk. I'm you. probably either. I got two fire. hands. I'm not taking one. I got two hands. Okay. I'm take taking two. the Wild Turkey 12 Year Cheesy Gold Foil and my King Kentucky. Those are the two bottles I'm running out with. Picks. Yep. Not the Nectar's Reserve from the distillery no. or the no, because that, that one's almost empty. That one's almost empty. I need what more. If it was full. Nope. I still want to take that one. <laughs> I take those two. And I'd wear and I'd have a fanny pack and I'd shove my, I'd shove the. Uh, <laughs> I show what was the bottle? I would shove the Elijah Craig bottle of Wow in there. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> now, if you had, I see, like you got the um, um, the Parker's Heritage, ten year, ten year. Now the um, the single mall that they did, I had, I really, I was really impressed. You like that, that one? one. Yeah. If I, if I had one of those, that might be one I would grab. But yeah, well, the heavy char, that's a good bourbon. Is that a good one? Mm-hmm. One one the, bottle, Jesus Lord, that scared the shit out of me. Somebody agreed with you on the Wild Turkey Twelve uh, Gold Foil. Yeah. So your house catches on fire. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> 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 I'm on yeah. fire. Help me, Jesus. This is the party. I'm excited to see two of my favorite whiskey guys on. Hey, what's up, Lance? Help whiskey me, Tom tornado? Cruise. <laughs> Jason would burn with the collection. I might. I might. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew, Chip. <laughs> What about John Walker and Sons King George V? I have not had that one. I can't say I've had that one either. No. Bottle in each hand and cleanse a third between your cheeks. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do. Bottle. I'd be running slow, but I'd get it out there. That's right. Uh, Jason. That's right. I'd have my fanny pack on. I have a fanny. I don't know if I ever ask you that early on. Like when we, I mean, you know, years ago doing collabs, that would be one I would ask a guest we'd have on. Jason, break out that Middle West bottle we just got. Middle West bottle. Which Middle West bottle? Oh, the uh, the ported <laughs> pumpernickel. I think his thing is shot. I don't know if he could do it. Dateline special man burns with whiskey collector. <laughs> <laughs> that that might be it. Oh my J god! Jason had a, a water spigot installed in the basement with a hose. Did I tell you the story? What happened You're down to my, here fighting? It did, off? I did I tell you what happened to my art bag? Uh, um, with the black huh. so so this light i used to have like three of these like hanging out here and one was used to be right here one of the lights yeah i was just moving around and this thing came down and it i hit it and it fell on my barrel here see all these bottles yeah it hit that like four or five bottles fell only one broke and it was the it was the art bag black and the thing committee release Committee release. This whole basement smelled like fucking Pete for like a like two weeks. Pete and Pinot Noir. Pete and Pinot Noir. It was all <laughs> over the place. It was the cre it was like it was like the most disgusting but most glorious air freshener ever. <laughs> oh man. Uh, top shelf Dustin says let him try hazel burn. I'm grabbing one of my cases of spring banks, says Cohen. Which uh art bag release should a newcomer to Pete pick up? It's a good question. Or Big Ten. Newcomer Big Ten, to yeah. Pete? I would actually say Ugadol. Well, ooh, no, that's stronger. Um, actually, Anoa. 
A N O A. It's more oh, there. No, it's a that's little a good bit. One. Yeah, and it, it, it is sherry out. cask finished. It's a little bit sweeter, not near as much peat. I would yeah. start. Yeah, uh, A N O A, Anoa. Some people said, oh, Thanks Anoa. Thanks, Patricia Mervin. Appreciate that. N O N O uh, Anoa. Yeah, Kenneth Rathburn. Yeah. I always, yep. forget, I always forget about one. That was always kind of the forgotten. Because yeah. everyone's always so like Korvek and Ugadal. They kind of forget the, about that one. The only thing with Korvek and they're both very good. They're higher. They're a lot higher ABVs and they're hard big pizza. I mean, those yeah. are for somebody new. I would not recommend those. Are you going to fall again? I don't think I'm going to fall. But if you guys miss me falling before we do the giveaway, um, here's the fall. Uh, I fell. <laughs> like if you did that now, you're taking out like you know this. If, if, if I fell now, now, this whole shelf might come down oh, in my head, Jesus. and that's it. It's it's over. It's over. All right. All right. We're gonna cut off the giveaways here. Uh, Burr Ben, I'm not sure if you have the list, uh, but oh wait, we have one more. You can get Colt 45 in there. Looking forward to some Camp Nelson C, some Tyrone F picks before they decommission those warehouses. Hopefully, we'll see. I have no idea what they're going to roll out tomorrow, but I'm very excited to, to choose 10 to 15 barrels of Russell's Reserve tomorrow for the state of Ohio. So, um, uh, yeah, let me know how many uh, how many entries we have. I'm going to grab a quick pen I can't here. I can't recreate on this side because he's got a barrel over here with whiskeys too. There would be a lot more gone. A couple of people have mentioned the Hazelburn 13. I actually, I've had the Hazelburn 13. Oh, you have had that one? A couple one? bottles of it, and I've got a sealed one at home. So. Oh, do you? Yeah. Old, old, the Oloroso. Right down there. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get that from me, or did you get no, that? No, I got that from, I had, actually, I got that from Dustin. I had, um, there was, so those were released, that one, yeah. and then there was a long row Malbec finished yeah. in Kansas. They were both like $110. Okay. About a year later, all of a sudden, some more showed up in, in our area. Okay. It's like the distributor found them in the warehouse and yeah. had forgotten about them. They had them out for like 35 bucks. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. For that bottom, cheap? Bottom. Yeah, you bought all of them. Yeah, yeah both. Yeah. Uh, he, of course, I'm down to only one bottle left of the Hazelburn. We'll be in Ohio Saturday, flying up to buy a vehicle. Can't find a rental. Live near Cleveland? No, nah, I'm in I'm two hours south in Columbus, uh, Matthew, unfortunately. Let's say it's your birthday. What's your favorite bottle right now? <laughs> Let's say it's your birthday. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is my birthday. Today? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, February 9th. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday today? Yeah. 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 Believe it's shit. He doesn't say and anything. And they come, they come every year. He doesn't That's say right. they come every year. Yeah, yeah. but you're you live get... on the Master Drum and your your <laughs> your birthday. You don't say shit. <laughs> now I'm pissed. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to sing to you live. You're not gonna, you're gonna no, have to no, deal no, with it. no, no, no. You're gonna have to deal with it like that. You have to deal with it. <laughs> I think I, I actually I, I had kind of I had kind of uh, uh, just I'm looking like, back. Well, no. Let's. Well, do we need a birthday? You want a birthday pour? A birthday dram. What do you want to try? What do you want to have? <laughs> right there, that twenty-two year old SMWS we were talking about earlier. The wafts to heaven. Yeah. All right. Birthday pour it is. Another sixty-six, right? You yep. don't want it. You don't want to do the hard bag dark coat committee release. Nah. All right. I've had it. I've got it. All right. There you go. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's as far as I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Here you want to clean out your glasses. Do you know what year I was born? Um, Don't judge me by the hair. 1960 something. If you're in the later 60s, you're close. 60, 70. Oh, 1970? Yeah, I'm 52. 52 years old today. Oh, dude. Congrats. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no need to Happy sing. birthday, please, man. Please don't sing anymore. I'm not going to sing anymore. That's it. <laughs> uh, Scott, recreate it over on the other side. Yeah, that's what happened on the fall. Oh, my God. Are you, are you drinking this one, too? Yeah, I'll have that with you. You can pour right. Actually, let me uh, empty that out right here. There we go. 
Thanks, Jen. Good call. Yeah, Jen, Jen totally dimed you out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, rinse that one. Yeah, I'll rinse that one. Okay. So this yeah. was, yeah, this another, well, so Jason bought this one a while back, SMWS 66.168, right? I mean, you did a tasting with this one. Yeah, absolutely. That 22-year-old 20, Highland from a refill ex-bourbon. Well, bourbon, okay, okay we and have I've one heard, to 53. I've heard um, tales of this one. Yeah. All uh, right. This is a distillery that normally does peated whiskeys, and this was one that was So not. we're going to have three winners tonight. So why don't you pick, uh, pick a number between 1 to 53? Between one and fifty-three. Yeah, Burban, get ready, buddy. Well, I'm fifty-two, so 52. you want to go fifty-two. So fifty-two. So Burban, who is number fifty-two in the giveaway tonight? Oh wait, I think you, I think you missed it before. Oh no, I got it. Yeah, one fifty-three. Does Dan Daniel give me a number between? Wait, is he? Well, he doesn't know the number. Daniel, give me a number, and Jen, give me a number. Jen. Uh... Whiskey Go Girl? No. Jen Currents was it? Oh, the, the one that dimed you out? Dime me out. All right. Jason forgot the words the happy birthday. <laughs> no, I just didn't want to keep embarrassing him. <laughs> All right. So uh number 52, Bourbon. Who is that? Oh shit, JG. JG. JG in the house. JG, send me uh JG, shoot me an email at the mash and drum at gmail.com. And uh, we'll work out uh, what samples you want to try. I have a bunch of different bottles from SMWS, and we can um, we can figure out what you want to try. 24. All right. So the next one is 24. Jen Curran says 24. Bourbon, who do we got for 24? All right. Ardmore. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. Oh, man. Nobody's probably watching from the society anymore. <laughs> 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 oh. Number 24. Number 24 is Troy Mann. Troy Mann. Good job, Troy Mann. Troy Mann. I don't know why I'm saying it like that because I just feel like it's like Troy Mann. Um, email me at themassendrum at gmail.com. We'll get your sample set up. Mm. And uh, you want to you want to call out Daniel for the last one? Daniel, yeah. Dan, Whiskey Throttle. He didn't answer. I don't know. Call out a number between 1 to 53. Congrats, Troy, man. <laughs> oh, I love this one. Speaking of speaking of pine, there's a little pine on this one. Well, maybe that's just my palate now because I got that on that first one he gave me. This one's definitely savory. Mm. 43. 43. What do we got? 43, uh, Mr. Bourbon. Yeah, is Women and Whiskeys on tonight? I didn't see any, I didn't see anything come up from them. I don't know. Uh, Burben, who do we got for 43? So this will be a sample pack and also a bottle of the Bardstown Fusion 6. Hell yeah. I'll also throw a sample of the Bardstown Triple Stave in this mix as well. Hmm. Uh, oh, yeah, there is a fourth bottle. Yeah, the one from Durrell. Yep. Um, all right, so... Who was 43, Bourbon? I got to point out JG and Thrasher. Thrasher are both 1970 babies. Oh, they're also 1970s. There you go. Ooh. 43 is, oh, shit, Sir, Spock Sir, Sir Sparkalot. I couldn't even see that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Sparkalot. All right, Sir Sparkalot, send me a message at uh, themasterdrum at gmail.com, and we'll uh, get you your samples. We're going to do one more number. I'm going to pick it this time. I'm going to go in a low, low, uh, low area here. I'm going to go with number. I'm going to do my birthday, number nine. Number nine. Bourbon, who's number nine? They will get the bottle from Darrell Stewart of the Glenfiddich 14. Sugar Kitty says that Women of Whiskeys has a Valentine's stream tonight. Oh, perfect. 
So they can't do a Valentine stream tonight, though. I mean, it's well, it's almost here. It's Wednesday, February 9th. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Women of Whiskeys has a Valentine stream. Yeah, all right. So after this, go over to Women of Whiskeys. Mark Edmonecker says, I got you by two years and two weeks. There's Sir Spark a lot. Says, yeah. Uh, any winners tonight, email me at the master drum at gmail.com and we'll uh, talk about what you guys want to uh, try. Master Jump 9 is, oh, shit, Lito Cortez. Congratulations. You win the bottle of Glenfit at 14 from Darrell Stewart. Darrell's Glenfit 14. All right. Thank you so much. Shit. Well, dude, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Are you feeling all right? Yep. That was, yep. A, lot, that was a lot of whiskey we went through. Yeah. So uh, so let's see. Next week, right here on the Master and Drum, uh, I'll give you guys a, a recap, maybe a little bit of a video recap of my experience at the Russell's, uh, picking those Russell's barrels over at Wild Turkey. Um, Scott, why don't you, uh, anything else you want to say here to wrap up SMWS besides no. become a member today? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, having me on, Jason. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And like I say, I know our – virtual relationship has gone back, you know, several years. Absolutely. And yeah. uh, I, I love the collaborations and I'm, thanks for having me on. Hopefully we can continue. Absolutely. I mean, even for the Scotch test, go. If you don't know, I'm, I'm Scott with the Scotch test dummies. Bart is my partner there on YouTube. We do Scotch and bourbon reviews. Uh, we started with just Scotch, moved to bourbon. Last year I got hired with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, which led me here tonight. And we did uh, tasted quite a few. Yeah, so and I mean, honestly, good. I mean, we we got to we got to meet for the first time at the Bastards Ball, yeah. and we've talked a lot, and you know, just but you know, it's it's always a pleasure to have you and to to see you again, man. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, and um, go to smwsa.com. Check out for more information on SMWS. Yeah, guys, remember there's a special to join uh, this month. Uh, and so if you're if these casts that we tasted tonight sounded like it's in your wheelhouse it's i've been a member for the last two or three years it's definitely worth it it's not like you have to buy every outturn but there are some really unique casts in there that at least gives you an option uh to, to buy so with that uh, i'll see you guys next week right here on the mass and drum and as we always say it's not about the whiskey it's the people you share it with cheers buddy and happy freaking birthday dude <laughs> <laughs> Go uh, check out Women of Whiskeys on that Valentine's stream, uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Let's launch it down.